subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. This is Uncle Funky Larry Jones, and you're watching Donnie Houston. He's talking to one of the oldest, ugliest people on the radio ever, but he was a bad brother. That would be me with Donnie Houston from Magic 102.1. Yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Check it out, man. Uh, we have a, a special guest, and I know I've said this before, but this is these are the guests that I really look forward to. Uh, when you talk about Houston, when you talk about radio, when you talk about legendary, uh, this this man's career spans five decades. Um, he's been doing it, man. I mean, 30 years in Houston, you know, mostly for, you know, running those afternoons on 102, man, and... Um, He's not on 102 anymore, which is unfortunate, but the, the upside is he got some time to come kick it with me today, man. So, uh, <laughs> Uncle Funky Larry Jones, what's going on? Donna Houston, everybody. How you doing, man? Man, I am great, blessed, and thank you for having me up, man. I've heard so many good things about your podcast and work you've done with all the celebrities. I- I feel like a hip hop star today, man. I'm, I'm, <laughs> well, you know, I'm, I'm in the I'm in the castle. Well, this is the thing, and I, I meant to say this too. I'm going to get a disclaimer. You know, I am hip hop. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know, my parents are 75 years old. Mm-hmm. So if you want to talk about, you know, Al Green and Aretha Franklin and all them, if you want to talk about Sam Cooke, if you yes, want to talk about Sam Cooke and the Soul Stirs, if you want to talk about my grandmother's favorite group, the Mighty Clouds of Joy, on, you can't boy. go back that <laughs> far. So it's it, it's more than hip hop with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and what yeah. I'm trying to do is do more than that to showcase more than that because okay. my interests span much more than Houston much farther than hip hop so I mean I just love music man so that's why I said it's just not to have you here man well like I, I I liked you when I first met you I knew there was something special about you and like I said I'm I'm happy to be here man. this mm. is good this yeah. is good yeah so we were chopping it up a little, a little earlier you want to know yeah. what was I doing in my spare time you, my got, free you, got, time. Sp- you got spare time <laughs> now man tell me about this man how you how you how you functioning with this 50 it's, years in the radio I mean it's just a huge adjustment you know what I mean and the 50-year part's not so bad because I moved around. Right. I did uh, 18 other stations in 11 different cities before God had me settle in Houston. But it's the, it's the recent 102 routine that I got into. So that's been full-time since, oh, no, 2010 when I left Yolanda's show. I started my voiceover company, got back into a groove, and and they called and, and basically said, what are you doing? Hmm. And I said, I'm available. So we came back for that run. Uh, but it's, it's, it's different. I'm a lot older. So that has a little effect on it. I'm in great shape. Just had a physical. All the dots are hitting the right spot. Uh, but it's that, that, that routine that a lot of us. I could be that factory worker. I'm probably that guy at Exxon <laughs> right now who's so used to pushing yeah. that button every day or turning that valve yeah. and doing his thing, you know. And then um, your bus gets to a stop, and it's, a, it's time for a transfer. Yeah. And God has transferred me into a wait. Sit down, young man. I'm pleased with all the work you've done through the years here in the city, either in morning drive, afternoon drive. And sit down and rest for a minute. So we're cleansing, we're thinking of things. Uh, like I said, we, we, we're still making money through the voiceover company and uh, I image five other stations outside of the Houston market. Um, the Texas Radio Hall of Fame keeps me busy with appearances and it's, it's, it's a new place for the, the youngest 70 year old you'll ever meet in your life. <laughs> yeah. Other than probably your parents, but <laughs> you know. So I, I'm in a I'm in a holding. I we call it, I call it cocooning. I'm I'm in a cocoon, and 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 we'll just see what this butterfly comes out to be in a couple of months or a couple of weeks or whenever God says I'm ready. Yeah, I mean, are you enjoying this though? Like, I, I mean, am. you get a break. You know what I mean? Like I said, I, you had I do. A, a 50 year run of. I mean, I know it was multiple markets, but you're talking yeah. about working 50 years. You I did. Know what I mean, I did. And my first prayer, my first prayer, honestly, was longevity. Hmm. 1973, Montgomery, Alabama. Hmm. Didn't have a clue what I was doing. And God kept opening doors, and I wasn't afraid to did move. You, did, were you a radio kid? Like, what, what, what like hmm. tapped your interest in the radio? Radio, radio was a, a challenge for my uh, public speaking announcer hmm. at State. 
And we didn't even have a school of radio. There was no such thing. It just recently got a radio station, it being Alabama State and Montgomery. But the radio came from a public speaking instructor who had us do an impromptu speech one day in class. After class, she said, Larry, let me say something. You can have a career in television or radio. Hmm. I said, really? Because my degree is in political science. Um, what were uh, your aspirations at that time? I mean, with the, with the poly science. Honestly, the aspirations were to run and gain city council in Montgomery, Alabama hmm. with a vendetta because city council had stripped my grandmother's house off of its streets. Matter of fact, the street doesn't exist anymore. If you travel I-65 in Montgomery, going to Atlanta, mm -hmm. and you get to the Jackson Street exit, look to the left, and that's where my grandmama's house used to be on Tatum Street. And I love my grandma. So when the family had to move and we lost the family house, I became incensed. So my whole motive other than being in the band and being a drum major was hmm. after that was done, I was going to have a political career. Hmm. And I just thought that politics, polit politicians should learn how to speak. And that's how I got to the public speaking class. And uh, Ms. Harborough had a, a U-turn. She said, you sound and look like you can do this. Audition for campus announcer. I auditioned for campus announcer. I became campus announcer. Again, God intervention. I, MC the Founders Day program. There's a local jock in the audience who finished Alabama State. He pulled me to the side of the program. He said, look, Larry, you got something. It's a daytime radio station, but in the summer months, it stays on a little longer. So we always need part-time people. Go down tomorrow morning, tell them Jack sent you, and tell them you want to apply for the part-time position. So I don't know if you're a fan of Charlie Brown or not. Right. The baseball game. He's finally, you know, he's always the worst player. But Charlie Brown gets a hit, and Charlie Brown gets the first. Charlie Brown gets the second. Charlie <laughs> Brown gets the home. And now he's got the dilemma. Do I steal home <laughs> or do I stay on third base? And, Donnie, I am all of 18 years old, just hmm. about to turn 19. And my eyes are big as saucers. Uh, to show you how historical this is, the radio station was located at 211 Dexter Avenue. It's uh, half a block down from Dexter Avenue Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. Dr. King. Dr. King yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're on what we call Boot Hill, State Capitol building is staring you in the face. I mean, it's historic. And I pull up in my 1969 Camaro. Hmm. And I'm like, whoa, what am I going to do? I, everything else was kind of on campus. I'm in a building with folk I don't know. And and and, that, and I would imagine you're, one of, you're probably the youngest kid, probably in the building ever. ever. Yeah. And and you you hear you hear speakers like Mr. Harvey talk about taking that leap of faith, that leap, with no net, just believability that you can do this. And so I got out the car, took a deep breath, <laughs> and brother had to use the restroom real bad, but <laughs> hit the door, and here are some people I don't know, folk I never seen, grown folk. Uh, running a radio station and oh yeah yeah jack told us you were coming come on in uh, go back in the back room and there's three commercials back there read those and 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 let us uh let us hear how you sound and oh by the way the production room doesn't work i said all right i'm 18 but i wasn't born at night right i look around i'm nosy i do stuff somebody had pulled the plug out i put the plug in Thing reset itself. I found the mic. I found the recorder, and I cut three spots. And hmm. I, when I finished it, I'm done. So you mean you're done? That machine, that room don't work. I said, "Well, it's working now. Put it in playback and listen." And they were like, eh, "Okay, hmm. young boy got some, got some, got some spunk on it." Hmm. All right, man. Well, you you did that. Uh, you're going on studio. Fifteen minutes. Yeah, that look. <laughs> that same look. <laughs> So this is all cold. Yeah. I'm literally sweating to death, about to pee in my pants, but I passed the first little goofy test. Donnie, I take the studio. I learn how to cue because we're doing, we still have vinyl. We, we, we're queuing up records and, and, and I'm placing carts in the deck for commercials or 
top of the hour ID. And they come in with the classic black, I'm going to show you how to do a thing. That does that. That does that. This does that. Those are the mic. Those are the turntables. And there's the microphone. And oh, by the way, you got to hit top of the hour, four o'clock for the National Black Network News. Cool. And the records trailer. <laughs> Broken down, busted headphones. Find the cue. Find the record which was Earth, Wind, and Fire, Shining Star. I was going to ask you what, 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 what were you playing? My first record was Shining Star, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Man. Got it queued up, hit a drop, let it go. I said, all right, I got three and a half minutes to, 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 to figure this thing out. So I found some cuts that were timed. I, I was fairly good in math, so I was back timing all the way up to match the clock to get to the top of the hour, which was the most important thing. Cracked the mic, did some corny breaks, and, <laughs> and, and some stupid stuff, some PSAs. Um, and get ready for the top of the hour. So I'm back time, and I got record playing, and I'm hitting, and I hit the ID, uh, 1600 WAPX Montgomery. Dun, 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 and they give them the trailer for the news. Pots open right at 4 o'clock. Mm. And it's ticking. And it's dead air. Because they don't, it's dead air. All right, all right small boy, what you going to do? Fire up that instrumental again. Get something back on the air. Don't open the mic. Just let the music play. And let's see what kind of foolishness this is. And sure enough, 20 seconds past the top of the hour, on purpose, the news comes in. Get the news on, shut everything down. I go to the studio door, and they stand in there applauding. Hmm. Pass every test they put up for you. <laughs> I said, boy, and no need of you going to the restroom because you'd have peed all that. I said, yeah, I <laughs> True story, you right? You peed on yourself. Right hand to God. Well, you were in the groove. You're trying to find everything. Yeah, you did so much moving. on your mind. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm like, I, okay, but whatever. All right, because I'm going. I was already sweating like a pig. It was hot in there, man. This is 1973 in the worst radio station in America. But here's the story. Come out the door. They start applauding, and they're laughing, laughing their ass off. I said, boy... You're pretty cold for the first time. I said, I just did what made sense. And y'all pulled the plug in that production room on purpose, didn't you? Oh, you caught him out. You saw that. Mm -hmm. I said, and y'all set that clock 20 seconds ahead because y'all knew it was coming. So you knew the time was off, didn't you? Hey, we had to see what you're going to do. We had to see what you're made of. <sighs> did I get the job or not? Right. Well, 50 years later, yeah, I got the gig. I uh, was heard by more people than I realized. White Cat came to me uh, one Sunday after I got off because I did everything, Donnie. Mm -hmm. I, ran, I ran Dr. Ike, Frederick D. Iker and Coder's tape on Sunday. I had 15-minute gospel singers who came in and played, paid $15 for 15 minutes and Eight of that 15 was them thanking their sponsors. Hmm. I collected the money for the program director. He didn't trust many people. When, I, when, 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 when everybody finished, I got the tapes on and stuff ran until the next John came in for his ship. Al would come in. I heard you, boy. You're on a tight board. And I always prided myself on being a tech, good technician. Um, you got my money? <laughs> I said, yeah. Here's any kind of... Yeah. And you're honest, too. I said, hey, what's the steal for? You know? Man, you are not like anyone else we've ever met. Half of them get, couldn't get past the goofiness <laughs> in the production studio. So you already said some crazy stuff. So there were life lessons. There were new boundaries being in place. All, all the things that we now have terms for. I didn't know what any of that was. I, I survived. I jumped off the cliff and I, I landed and I made it. And um uh, but I've always been a performer, always been a showman. Um, being a drum major at Alabama State was one of the best things that ever happened to me. I was a drum major before at a predominantly all-white high school in Landover, Maryland. Broke some color barriers. What did you, you play in the, uh, in the actual I game? play three instruments. So I play trumpet. I play flugelhorn. I play French horn. All, well, four, I play baritone. No baritone. shit. You still yes, play sir. now? Can you still play? I have just been recently encouraged by family and friends and a great producer, Miss Raven Carmusta, 
to go back and put the chops in. I tell you, the last time I played professionally was at the old Western Hotel up on the rooftop. There was a club up there. Mm -hmm. And a group came in from Dallas, Dallas Brass and Electric. And I sat in with them, uh, did two sets, put the horn down, and walked away. So um, some odd years later, here I am about to, about to reinvent and see if I can A little ambient still, and mm. so we, we can mm. we can we can see Explorer. see what's going to happen. So, uh, but yeah, I, I, I've I've enjoyed playing. I enjoy performing. Uh, that and this was pre swag, so a lot of your fans may not know that Alabama State was not in the swag, but I think that was one of the smartest schools, mm. uh, smartest moves the school did. Competitions great, bands are off the chain, and these kids are performing every week, pouring their hearts out. No matter, you know, Mississippi Valley, Alcorn, Alcorn, I never get it right. I'll figure it out. Now, fam, you was in with Bethune, Cookman. I just love the energy, man. So yeah. I'm still a band head at heart. I'll, I'm a band kid, too, man. Yeah. I, I grew up percussion, you know what I mean? Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah middle yeah. school, high school, and then, you know, I kind of let it go after that. But yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, well, I produce now, but growing up, band it was in you. Yeah, 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 man. It, yeah, and, yeah. you know, my grandmother wanted me to learn piano, and I'm probably going to take some class to honor her now at, at this stage because she wanted me to. Was you, little, you weren't trying to hear it at the time? Hmm? You weren't really trying to hear it at the time when she was trying to get you to play piano? The it, piano at my grandmother's house, Donnie, actually scared me. It was hmm. an old upright, yeah. and it just looked like it was haunted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little kid, you know. I, so I, I was it spooky? I, man, <laughs> that Trust makes noise, boy. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, because at night we thought we heard heard it play, you know. Mm. And so <laughs> I, 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 I said, no, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna find something else. So one of the um, band directors at at, at uh, state suggested I start on a cornet because it was small. I started at five. I started oh, playing. Wow. I started. I, I started learning at five and. Uh, just basic scales and and God, I drove my folks crazy with Twinkle Twinkle Little Star and <laughs> and, and every little horrible sound. But every good boy does find F E C E. You learn your scales mm -hmm, and your spaces, mm -hmm. and it never leaves you. So um, that's basically how I got the state, and then the the turn to radio came, and I have not looked back and have not regretted one day. In all the cities I've worked, man. it's it's been a tremendous run. How long how long was your run in? Because uh, you were saying you know somebody heard you while you were in a smaller mm -hmm. station. How long was that? How long was your run at that particular station before six you went weeks? Off? Oh, you just did six weeks there. Six weeks and White Cat called request request line. He said, "Man, I don't know really who you are, but you sound great." I said, "Okay." He said, "I'm blah 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 from WRMA nine fifty nine. This was the this is a 24-hour AM. Um, formatically, it would be somewhere between um, KRBE and maybe 97.9. Hmm. Uh, but a lot more pop. More hip. Yeah, but, yeah. but it was hmm. very. And it, it, was, it was playing the top black cuts of the era. And man. When I got there, it was like a whole nother world. And this is in this is still Montgomery. Montgomery. Yeah, yeah. So there, that radio station was located at the transmitter site. Now, there's stories with all these, so I hope we have time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> okay. So he tells me how to get out to the radio station. It's in a double wide trailer at the transmitter site, and like I said, it's an AM station, uh, directional. So there were one, two, three. There were six towers, and it had a range, it was a 100,000 watt AM. I'm sorry, 50,000 watt AM. And daytime, all of Central Alabama. At night, you could barely hear it in the parking lot. But that was okay, because they had to protect the other channels at 9.50 coming in. So my first shift was uh, midnight to six. Hmm. Sunday, midnight to six, I actually filled in for a guy who didn't show up. And are you getting paid during these times? Like, what yes. Is, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm getting a box of donuts and coffee. <laughs> and, and let's see, gas was thirty two cent a gallon back then, so probably ten dollars, hmm. ten minutes. You know, but for a college kid, hey man, sorry, it, it was good. Yeah. And so, 
Um, and it was in an environment where I heard things a little differently. My first break, my only break, before the hotline went off, was 950 WRMA. <laughs> Larry, great tone, but it's R, not Aura. I never heard it before. You never even, yeah. Never heard it. But off the riff, here's someone investing in me to get it right. Not just goal, just our sound says R, not Aura. So I want you to practice every 15 minutes. That's the only thing you can say. That's the only time you can talk. Hmm. You don't intro a song. You don't outro a song. You say 950 WRMA Montgomery. 950 WRMA Montgomery. 950 WRMA Montgomery. 950 WRMA. I did that from 1215 to 545 every 15 minutes. So that lesson, A, enunciation, B, different ways to sell the call letters, and C, discipline. How mm. bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Are you willing to not do anything else but what? So you, 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 you're obedient. <laughs> you can follow instructions. And with that lesson, promotions came. Movement came. There would never been a black announcer at that radio station ever in its history. I came. Mm. I went from midnight to six to 2 to, no, 10 to 2 at night, and from 10 to 2 to 6 to 10 at night, all a first for any one of my calling, especially Montgomery, Alabama. Station is being sold by a group in Little Rock. This is 1976 now, so I'm three years in. And the owners drive in, and they're all asking, where's Larry, where's Larry, where's Larry? And I said, we listen to everybody on this radio station. You're the only one we're going to keep. Hmm. But my question is, can you drive? I'm like, yeah, I'm not 19 years old, I can drive. He said, all right, in two weeks, you report to J.D. Black at KOKY Little Rock. Okay. Morning drive. Wow. I think Little Rock is number 76 station in, in, in Montgomery's like 126 in terms of ratings. Mm. So again, his God, his God's word, his being obedient, his promotion, now elevation. But Donnie, you're leaving home. That's what I'm saying. You're still in school. Well, I, with 76, I was, you were about was, a year left. I was maybe? graduating. Yeah. And, and, and what few family members I had. Now, I was born in Montgomery. I wasn't raised in Montgomery. Mm -hmm. That's a whole nother story. But I came back to state to go to school. And being a drum major in Alabama State, working in the radio, on the radio in Alabama, Montgomery, you're a big fish in a small pond. I mean, the parties and, and, and what little action life we had in Montgomery, it was... But you were the man. And all of a sudden, you, you, <laughs> you're challenged. Hmm. Um, Did you ever question on if you were going to go or not, or you knew immediately I'm going? Well, I had to think back to that first day when I went to WAPX. I was nervous, but I got out the car to go get the job. So I kind of relied on that, that swag, you want to say, hmm. uh, to, 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 to do it. So... Uh, they gave me, what, $500 cash and travel money and a map. Hmm. And with no GPS, this old school <laughs> pull-out map to get from Montgomery to Little Rock. And um, I chose a scenic route through Birmingham. I went through Nashville. I went down through to Jackson and then over to Little Rock. Um, and I show up. 
and I asked for J.D. Black because the station was at 1440 on your, on the AM dial. I still remember some of the slogan. 1440 on your AM dial, the ear conditioned sound of soul. Mm. The black spot on your dial. <laughs> K-O-K-Y. That's crazy. You can still spit this stuff like this. Donnie, I practice every day. You'd be surprised. I just got off of a session with one of my heroes, a guy by the name of Robert W. Morgan, who was morning drive at um, uh, KHJ in, in Los Angeles. This is 1965. And his air check is in my phone now. But he was the new revolution of what, call, what they call the boss jock, boss radio. And Robert W. Morgan was at 93 KHJ, Los Angeles. Hmm. I was blown away. I'm like, and these are these are these are white cats with rhythm of black cats in there. They're dancing on every beat and they're moving in and out. And they got a they got a one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, stop. They're hitting the intros. And they're uh, they're just in a groove. And it, it was infectious to me. So I I've had people say, man, well, was it what was it about the radio? It was the announcer, the sound, the, 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 the top of the hour IDs, as corny as that is. Man. I said, man, that sounds like something I can do. And it's what I ended up doing. Um, another favorite station, just driving through it, and, and, and I have them on my apps now because it is so good to be historically linked to uh, one of the oldest black radio stations, uh, WDIA hmm. in Memphis at, at 1070. So I'm driving. I'm riding. I'm doing, um, let's say, Bernadette from the Four Tops, which is a tiny intro. Tiny, like less than four seconds. Cash call coming up in five. Cash call coming up in five minutes. It's your doctor on WDIA. Or I'll practice over Stevie Wonder. Um, I was made to love you. Or I'll find him. Are you funky Larry Jones? What what are you going by? Oh, Lord, where am I now? I'm in Little Rock. I really had to get rid of the name because he was a cousin to Bobby O.J. and Eddie O.J. Hmm. I was for a season. Lord, forgive me. I hmm. never said I'd mention his name again because he was a horrible person. Great announcer. He was a kid. Hmm. He's 22, 23 years old, and he did what all great announcers have done. <laughs> <laughs> the flowers were plentiful. Yeah. <laughs> so I, his name was Larry O.J. Hmm. Larry O.J. Yeah. You won't find that on any resume. Or this, this is the first, probably, because I, I shot him about 20 years ago. Um, then the, the, the great name change when I came to Houston the first time, early as uh, 1980. That was the first time I showed up. That was a short run. Um, but I just left Little Rock. Call down to, and Magic was all the four years old at the time. Oh, you go from Little Rock to Houston? Yes. I'm sorry. Yeah. I spent four great years in Little Rock, and I got a call from the owner on the request line to come to Houston. And my dad was dying of lung cancer. And um, again, after a couple of years in Little Rock, there's elevation. You're now programming music director. You're now doing morning drive. And I got to tell you, Don, you, you're the man mm. in a bigger market, yeah. right? So um, I'm like, eh, and I turned him down. Mr. Lang was a very unique person, Mr. Monty Lang. He said, I know your dad is ill. Mm. Why don't we wait till uh, he passes? He was terminal. This is, this is 79, 78, 79. Technology with lung cancer. And he was a two-pack-a-day two cat. So brilliant. He had his doctorate, but goofy in life with taking care of himself. He died at 54. Oh, wow. But they, had, they took out a third of his lung and was treating him heavy with chemo. And the chemo explosion turned into other stuff. And he, 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 he passed away, God rest his soul. But, uh, so Mr. Lane called back, oddly enough, after my dad passed. And I'm like, who are you? 
You know, what is this, CIA, FBI? <laughs> he said, don't worry about how I know you. I just know you're ready for Houston, and Houston's ready for you. I jump in my 1980 Trans Am with the, the Burt Reynolds Firebird hmm. on the hood, T-tops. Oh, hmm. yeah. Now you you dealing with world class now, <laughs> you know? And I don't I don't really know, but I do. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm I. You're on your game. Yeah. yeah. There was a standard that I saw, and the cats with the Cadillacs and the guys with the chicks, the girls. I'm not gonna call them with, but <laughs> it was it was impressive. But I didn't want to be about that life. Mm -hmm. I like my Camaro. I like my. I was say, you got them sports right. cars, man. I like yeah. my cowboy boots, mm -hmm. and and I was there. So y'all can have that life. This is what I wanted. So we did. I, I came down, and I have people always document me because it was August of 80, and Hurricane Allen was in the Gulf. Didn't hit Houston, but he was in the Gulf churning. Winds were horrible. First hurricane of my life. And... I'm a I'm a Google nerd, so I always go back to make sure that when I tell the story, I got the right season. So I'm driving in, and I'm I'm having this thing, cause like all the cars are going north, and I'm like the only car in the rain going south. Listening to KILT and Eddie Rabbit driving my life away with the wind chills, bop, da, 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 da. Mm. All, I'm taking all this and I'm loving it. I'm like this is great, but you can't see. I missed the exit to get to 102. I take the next exit, find a gas station, drop some coins in, I call the program, program director, Bill Travis, who was still there. And I said, Mr. Travis, I'm lost. He said, where are you? I said, I, I, I'm somewhere, uh, West, Westland, Westland, hmm. something. He said, you just missed. You were supposed to get off at Richmond. I got off at Edlow. Oh, okay, oh. Something like that. And he said, well, just turn around. Do you turn somewhere and go back to that, that second street and make a, a right. And the, the, the first 102 was at, I want to say, 3303 Richmond at East Side, which is a black block around the corner from Lamar. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or thereabouts. So I go down Wesleyan. I cross West Park. Still had the trains. I, you come back. Train arm is down. And so I'm waiting, rains everywhere, and here come the headlights. I'm like, no, nah. and here come the headlights. I'm like, man, I'm about to get popped. And sure enough, a uh, lady ran into me head on. Yeah. So firebirds total, the ladies a mess. It's raining. It's raining, it's pouring. And I'm sprawled out in the middle, 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 middle of West Lane and West Park at train tracks. So ambulance come. They take me to the shell station. That same shell station is there today. It was a full service shell, but they took me to the shell station. Um, everything checked out. Got a hold of Mr. Lang. He came down. Jesus, I killed him. It hadn't even been on the radio yet. I said, Doc, what? I said, no, I'm not. I said, I said, Give me a cup of coffee, man, and, and I'm ready. Um, and he says, you don't want to go to the hotel room and we'll start this tomorrow. I said, no, sir. I'm supposed to meet H.F. Stone, one of the legendary voices of our time. And she's supposed to teach me the board. I'm doing midnight to six. Hmm. I said, you hired a trooper, a warrior, a net case. What am I, all 20, 26 now? I made out of steel, Donna. Come on, you, you can't stop yeah, me, man. Yeah. Let's go. What are yeah, you talking about? Well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And sure enough, we I dry off. They take my car away. I wish I could remember the name of that Pontiac dealership because it would make you laugh. Um, and I end up at the station, did the overnight shift, got the room, met with Mr. Travis, got my instructions, and I'm getting ready for overnights. They said, no, you're going right in the afternoon drive. Mike Cavell, God rest his soul, legendary production and voice. Mike left to go to, I think, either KRBE or, or, or was it, there was a 90, 94 Love was on at the time up against one. I think he went there, but anyway, he left. 
102 at the time was like a carousel. Folk were coming in, coming out, just going around and round around. And he left. <sighs> then the guy doing mornings left. So I went from overnights to afternoons to mornings in about two weeks. And then I get a call from Chicago. And I leave. I end up going to... Wait, so how long was it that Houston room? Three months, maybe. Damn. Maybe. I was here long enough to do... I was here long enough to rent an apartment at the old... Uh, uh, please don't get to this age. It's crazy. Memory just tweaks back. But it was at Holly Hall and near Fannin. Um... It'll come to me. But I had an apartment there. And we got my car fully restored. We used to do um, contest. Paseo. Thank y'all. The Paseo Lounge Clubhouse was more popular than some nightclubs. Mm. There was always something going on at the Paseo. So you're in the hottest spot with some of the best looking ladies and guys in the city. And we're doing the match game. We're playing match game. We had a Hugh Hefner night. So all the guys were in their terry cloth bathrobes and the yeah, slippers. Yeah. And it was, it's 1980. Uh, the Oilers had just signed uh, Ken Stabler. Yeah. So we had these rattlers for the snake. Uh, I did an appearance at um, uh, Tyler Rose at, at, at um, Mr. Uh, Earl, Earl Campbell's Campbell? Club. Oh. Yeah. Earl had a spot called Tyler Rose. Yeah. Uh, where was that? Tyler, where was it? Uh, I want to say somewhere off Alabama, I think, but we can Google it and find it. Um, and now this is 1980, and there's a lot of drinking that's been going on. So don't, don't ask me too many specifics because <laughs> I'm doing my best to pull it all out. Um, Kenny Burroughs had a place called uh, World Famous. It was shaped in a dome, and it was right past where NRG Stadium is uh, in a parking lot. And Kenny was double oh zero. The, the, yeah, the, exactly the, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, Kenny had a spot. Um, and I was around long enough, and there was one more event I did at the Continental Ballroom. Continental Ballroom, which was an old grocery store that they reconfigured into a nightclub or a, a roller skating rink or something. But it was it was just all bigger than life for me. But like I said, I got a call. Um, and relationships and connections are everything. And this was a guy that I had a chance to work with in Little Rock who had just lost his afternoon drive announcer, a young man by the name of Marco Spoon. Marco Spoon, <laughs> wow. So <laughs> Spoon told the guys that, GCI that he could make more money across town in WBMX. And the program director said, go right ahead because I've got a friend in Houston who sounds better than you do. Hmm. I have never sounded better than Marco. <laughs> he drives me under a bus. But um, went up to meet the staff and came back and was introduced to the third largest market. This is uh, the last part of 1980, so August, September, I got to say right around October, November, mm. I was in Chicago in the beginning of the snow season. And I'm all of, I'm 27 years old, doing an afternoon drive. Damn. So how long, how long was the Chicago run? Chicago run was two years. Mm. Chicago run was two years because, again, Little Rock was a lab. And we did a lot of great stuff. And I mean, innovative things in Little Rock. Uh, stuff that some places are still emulating now. So we get a call from Craig Scott, who's the program director of WHRK, K97 in Memphis. And Craig said, I know you like Chicago. You know it's cold. I know you want to program K97 when you went Little Rock. We got all this stuff. I said, how much do you pay, Craig? Hmm. The fluff words are nice. I said, but... At this time, are you starting to get to the money in radio? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you were. Yeah. Um, Chicago, for the first two years, was about 50000 hmm. 50, 60000 And for uh, what they call a rookie afternoon cat, that wasn't bad money. Hmm. 
uh, and, and Mr. Mayo and the programming team took GC out of number one that year. And I still have the, the newspaper clipping from, uh, from Gary Fielder about that GCI run. So I think because Craig asked for morning drive and to program, I think I signed in Memphis in 1982, somewhere near 75, hmm. 75,000, which wow. was ridiculous. And I'm wow. now, what am I? Cl- You're cl- still young. Very. Yeah. And not married. And single. And goofy. <laughs> what, okay, what type of, what kind, what kind of shit you on, uh, Larry, at this time, man? 75,000, 75K Larry, man. What, what, what are you on at this time, man? Now you have to bring me into today's conversation. You said, "What am I on? What are you on? Like, what is, what is, what is your, what is your mind? What are you doing at this time? How are you living your life at this time? Like oh, you right say, now? Yeah. No, right. it, yeah, you ain't right. got, no, you, no, got right. you got this money. You ain't yeah. got no kids. You ain't got, you know, you don't have no, no, uh, no wife. No, you know, you good. My partner for life, Jimmy Smith, and I have a uh, uh, townhouse in West Memphis, hmm. to Scruffs Bridge." And we are up in the lab every day and every night dissecting how we're going to take Memphis, meaning how we're going to win. It's a four black station market. So you've got WLOK, you've got WDIA, you've got FM 101, and you've got K97. And K97 came on in the last era of the sweet disco swing movement. And it was one of three in the entire plow broadcasting chain. Memphis, Baltimore, Atlanta. Hmm. And Jimmy and I made up our mind that we were going to find the sweet spot. I'm a strategist. Jimmy has an ear to this day. He's, he's one of the great music directors and, and, and music managers forever. Um, and we, we listened. We monitored. We hit the streets. We... We did the hole in the walls. We did the cafes. We did the clubs. We went to Memphis State. Uh, we went to Philander Smith. We went to as many schools as we could find. And we got the ear of the kids. And we wondered, what if? And then the universe blessed us with artists like Madonna. Hmm. So we were one of the first stations on the planet to play Material Girl. And they lost their mind. And we're still doing... Your basic top 40 black, but it's as many black hits as you can find. This is 82, so Jeffrey Arnsborn has just left LTD. You got this new chick named Shaka Khan who's coming out. Uh, You got Gladys who's on it, and the hits just keep on coming. And then we were introduced to a group called Culture Club. Hmm. And I heard it, and Jimmy said, what do you think? I said, well... We out here. Might as well go. Pop guys came back and said, man, the White Seas won't even play Culture Club. But y'all banging it. I said, yeah. You see our numbers? We're winning. You see when we go to the club? We're integrating. We're winning. George Klein from the old Elvis crew uh, and all the old boys from uh, WHBQ, Rick Dees, they're hanging around going, man, y'all are doing some next level stuff uh, because... We've never heard a radio station play a black artist and a white artist Hmm. in the same vein. Well, as you know, drummer, if you can count to four, (laughs) you get it in. You'll be here and there and and won't even know it. Say, wonder how did I get? Yeah. And with the right touch, uh, that's why I have so much respect for for people like Chili Bill and 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 GT, uh, the Hollywood Boys. Uh, uh, Rob G uh, and Walter D, you know, the, the legendary that, DJs, oh, yeah, yeah. and 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 that groove that mm. that's it's in there. So for me, I was back on the field at Bama State. I could see a routine. I could hear it, and that was part of the gifting. So when we found the strategies where to put it in the programming clock to make it make sense. I'm not trying to scare anybody, but it was different. Um, it worked. And it, it kept working. Um, Pop acts like the uh, uh, pet, shop, pet Shop Boys, West End Girls. Mm-hmm. Crew, nasty. 
uh, we introduced Steve Winwood. Mm. Not only hire, hire, hire love, but roll with it. Mm. Uh, the Doobie Brothers was a staple. Michael McDonald was a next door neighbor. And, uh, and plus he's from St. Louis. And, uh, and he'll tell you, I got this groove by listening to OWESL, which is a radio station in East St. Louis. So the groove has always been important to me, will always be important to me, uh, that sound. And um, we did the same thing when we found our legendary slow pieces. So uh, the Memphis run went from 82 to 84. I'm now with a young lady and she's with child. Hmm. And we own them. That was the goal. We always tried to become that station. And we did. Plus, uh, Plow Broadcasting, uh, sharing Plow Pharmaceutical. Uh, you, you, you may have some of their products in your house right now if you use DAC caulking or if you use Dr. Show's foot hmm. spray or, or foot pads. Um, that's the people that the pharmaceutical had these radio stations across the country. And they had three black stations and we dominated and unfortunately they they sold the radio property off to uh build some new super drug called interferon which was supposed to be the cure-all cure-all cure-alls hmm. never did work hmm. but that's how they eventually were sold to uh iheart their current owners now i left to come back to the team that owned 102 the amateur family we own they own three as well it was houston st louis and detroit and in 1984, I found a home in St. Louis with a young man by the name of uh, uh, Kevin Woodson. And the doctor was born. Hmm. Doc Jones came back, came to life. So it was Doc Jones, Kevin Woodson, and the wake-up service from 1984 until 88 in St. Louis. My, excuse me, my first and only child is born. Uh, she's embraced by the then St. Louis football cardinals. Uh, the St. Louis baseball Cardinals, and we 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 had missed out on the Atlanta, well the St. Louis Hawks because they'd gone to, to to Atlanta. So we, the sports teams, loved us. Uh, Mr. Augustus Bush himself blessed my child. We were invited out to the plant, uh, Anheuser Bush, and and I kind of thought St. Louis was going to be it, hmm. you know, and 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 I was really. I was really about to settle, settle in St. Louis, and we got a call from legendary Green Bay Packer, number 87, all-world Mr. Willie Davis. Hmm. And Willie Davis said, Larry, can you and Jimmy do for me in Milwaukee what you did for Mr. Plow in Memphis? And much to my, but I packed up because, you know, we, I'm a strategizer. I'm, we, yeah, we got a new opportunity, and this is growth and it's movement. And Milwaukee presented... Some very unique opportunities, some unique things. That was the whitest city we would played for. So some of the R&B cuts didn't fare as well. Hmm. Um, it took them a minute to catch up to the Barquets and Holy Ghost. Uh, but everything else we played, they received. And again, here's a market that wasn't playing Pet Shop Boys, wasn't playing Culture Club for whatever radical reason. And you got these two black kids coming in and, and you know, we're, we're lighting it up. So much so that Chicago calls again. So my partner Jimmy gets called from uh, Mr. Hiram in Dallas. And he's off to K104. And I get a call from a legendary programmer, Lee Michaels. Milwaukee's only 90 miles away from Chicago. Mm -hmm. So Lee says, can you come do that again in, in, in Chicago? So where we at right now when you come to Chicago? What year is Chicago, this? this is um this is like 86, 87? 86, yeah. 87. My run between 87 and 89. I had to write it down because it was like five stations. Yeah. Hmm. I it was it was nuts. One was because of a, a buyer who instructed the owner to dismiss all the staff because they were going in another direction. I go back across town to one of my old other stations, which was GCI. Doug Banks was still alive, and they had a young man by the name of Tom Joyner doing afternoons. And I am a freelance swing announcer. So, again, another record set. 
they're so happy to have me and we're good enough to do a lot of different things. So Doug hires me as another producer for his show. I was in, 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 in charge of editing the morning show, getting the next morning promo ready. Um, I had to make sure that stuff was clean, stuff was put away, I was organizing. So as much as it was a grunt job, it taught me how to put things in, in, in categories and where stuff belonged with headphones. And that's why I'm such a nerd with that now. Because, man, he's, he's mean. He's this, he's that. Well, no, you learn to take care of your stuff because I, I'm working in Chicago with some of the greatest names in the business. And, 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 and we put stuff back, young man. We, 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 yeah. Some old mama stuff, right? But it works because you have, you have the Walter Paytons of the world. You have the Michael Jordans of the world. Come in, and you don't want to look raggedy, hmm. you know. And 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 folks finally start to get that there's a there's an etiquette level to this thing. Um, you have to wash, take a bath, and you know, and, and stop all that putting on twelve things of cologne. You stink, <laughs> man. Only, so just you know, life lessons learned. So there was a uh, there was an opportunity for me to join that staff. And here again, I'm thinking this is my second run through Chicago. I got my kid, and maybe it's time to just settle down, you know, uh, and all the signs. My dad graduated from the University of Chicago. I, I'm, you lining it up. Oh, it, and, <laughs> yeah. and I have a decent name. Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm not the, 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 the Herb Kents of the market. I, I'm not a Doug Banks. I'm not a Tom Joyner. But I got a decent run, and, and uh, we're, you know, we're doing things in a place called the Copper Box 2, hmm. a spot called Oasis. It, it, was, it was good. There was a spot over in, <laughs> in Gary, Indiana, where Mr. Charles Warfield, you know him as Wham, saved my life one night. So just... You say save your life, what happened? On Tuesday, we had a ladies' night. GCI did. Mm -hmm. And that particular night, there was a young radio personality who happened to have an eye on the owner's daughter. And when I can go old school on you and tell you, tell you, tell you she was fine as frogs here. <laughs> yeah, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> and boy, I, I, I zoned in and pops and all the uncles saw me zoning in and she zoned back. Mm. Get that blankety blanket back in. Man, it was like Wild West. Bottles start flying, and man, you can't touch my chocolate. Mr. Mr. <laughs> Wham grabs me by the yoke of my collar and said, Doc, we got to get you out of here. Just hold on. And that's how Charles Warfield and I became lifelong friends. And to this day, I owe him a debt of gratitude because. They were thinking of doing some very evil things to this radio kid, and I wouldn't have none of it. I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. <laughs> Just get your crazy ass out of here. So, um, yeah. And uh, that was that run, and that was the end of that. Hmm. So, yeah. We, oh, that ended the Chicago run? Uh, that ended my going over Tuesday night. To oh, that, that was in that. Yeah, yeah gotcha, that ended gotcha, that. Gotcha, gotcha. Doc, you can't go back over that. So, <laughs> so one Sunday, which was my regular, I, I mentioned I worked swing and, and I did all of the vacations back to back to back to back to back. So I'm on for Doug. I'm on for Yvonne Daniels. Uh, I'm on for Chili Childs. I'm on for Tom Jonah. I'm on for Marco Spoon. I'm on for the legends of black radio in 1970, 1987. We do a countdown show where we have three announcers at three remote locations. And I'd seen this on television. So at the time, the program director, Sonny Taylor, I said, Sonny, we should have three different remotes uh, equipment set up so we can go live from the Rosemont Horizon. Uh, Luther and Anita Baker were doing New Year's at the Rosemont Horizon. There was a big party down at Navy Pier. And then at the McCormick Center, it was this, this house party with, uh, what's the big house boy's name at the time? Because uh, they were just coming into their, their, their groove. So house music had its, hmm. was starting to make its appearance in, in Chicago. And um, Sonny said, okay, and who's going to run it? He said, you are. Your idea, hmm. you're going to run the studio. None of this had ever been done before. So they bring in three separate mixers for three separate mics. They got, they got banks hooked up 
with a, 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 a level R, and he's walking around the, I don't know the name of it now, but I, it, Rosemont Horizon, I think it, obviously it's changed names over the years, but Doug is live at the Rosemont. Uh, Harold E. Rush um, is live at, at Navy Pier with uh, Irene Mojica, and there was another jock, I can't call their name right now, but they were live at the at the McCormick place. And literally the term, we've got the city covered like a blanket hmm. came out. Now you've got a high profile black radio station doing more, the most than anybody else in the city. And this is legendary WLS, The Loop. Uh, it just doesn't get any bigger than this. And we're putting on a production. And here I am every break. So what I saw on television was the lead introduced did the thing and he threw it to the next announcer and the next announcer did it the, and they threw it and they threw it back to the station. ID going to uh, a stop set. It only got squirrely at the countdown. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Doug is the lead. So Doug is supposed to do the official countdown. Well, you got, you got, you got, Marco and bait parties, you got folk drunk, and you get everybody's brought in the new year before the official new year <laughs> out of Rosemont with Doug. But one of his classic lines is, Happy New Year. I'm standing here with Luther. How does it feel? Luther says something. He said, I know about Luther. Well, I don't give a damn. I'm going to hug him. <laughs> so he gives <laughs> Luther a hug, and, you know, in, in 1987, 88, folk, you know, they're mm -hmm. tripping. So that was that classic piece. Three days later, I get a call from Miss Sharon Haywood. She said, there's a rep in Chicago who says you are what Mr. Charles Warfield and the team at WBLS New York need. Hmm. New York was never on my radar, although you're going to do it. As Pop said, if you're going to do trash, you're starting it back. I expect you to end up as driving the truck and then owning the damn thing. I said, okay. So I auditioned for New York. I got New York. And this is part of that five station run in, in a bunch of years. Uh, New York was interesting. New York, major challenges. Wait, this is WBLS? WBLS. This is hip hop. That ain't hip hop over uh -uh. there, right? No? Uh, all this is R&B. Hip hop is just beginning. Mm. So... You had... No, but that's what I'm saying. BLS wasn't early on. They, did, they weren't uh, on it early uh, on. There, there was a hip-hop show on mm -hmm. the weekends. Mm -hmm. um, but what we did, and I say we being the format in that space, there were songs introduced, like Dougie Fresh, you'd hear. Uh, 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 God, I can see him with the coupe. He had the leather stuff. And Kumo D, you'd hear. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, uh, KRS one you would hear, but it wasn't in regular rotation. It was it was just in the mix in some kind of way. Yeah. Because management knew it was coming. Mm -hmm. They knew it was coming. But in a balanced world, you're trying to get keep the both keep both of the best best worlds or best of both worlds. And and that's what happened. Um so in that that was pretty much that the last swing of the true R and B and then swinging into the hip-hop age. Um, and then Houston call. Hmm. Houston calls, and this is 89, 90. I had a New Year's Eve show to do with Grace Jones at the Underground. I said, y'all let me make this money, and I'll, 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 I'll start in Houston. So I came back um, 89 to 92 to do Afternoons. I when left. you come here, mm -hmm. was, what, okay, what do you come here to Houston to do? Were you on with, did, no, you came, this was like when Jimmy Olsen and all them and all these radio stuff. Uh, I don't think y'all worked together, but I want to say he may have mentioned you being on the radio around the time that he this, was on. This is, this is the evolution of the box. Like yeah. I said, this is the beginning of the whole hip-hop movement. Yeah. So I tell you, I'm doing afternoons. Um, Portia Fox had just left. One of the larger names, Jim Snowden had just left. I think Doc Kilgore was still with us. Uh, Greg Street did nights. And 
it may have been the last run of Rudy V at night into a kid by the name of Chris. Um, because Rudy was off on his path to, to do Dallas, which God, what a, what a cat. So yeah, there was that that era. I used to uh, I used to cut promos for Street. He was always rolling, and we would, he would take me down to the old front door club in in Texas City or Dickinson, and he always worked these small out of towns, and it was amazing. Greg would come back with buckets of money, man. Hmm. It was just good stuff. So. Uh, I learned a little hustle from from Greg, and I'm so happy he's doing well in Atlanta. And I'm a, he, he, yeah, Greg, she's a real legend, yeah, man. He's, real radio legend. Man. So he's uh, he, he's a he's a good friend. Um, so yeah, that was the that was the '92 run. I get a call to go to Baltimore, a uh, small company called Radio One, has all of four stations: two in Washington, two in Baltimore. In February. 14th, 1992, we kick off uh, Magic 95.9. Mm. Uh, hits and oldies. So we're playing the best of the 60s, 70s, and 80s. We fix that to play the best of the 70s, 80s, and we begin to introduce the 90s. Now, this is 92. So this is a legendary oldie station. But you can hear, and the ears have gotten a lot better. So my new artists were, Smile, Mariah Carey, hmm. Alicia Keys, hmm. Tony Braxton, hmm. Boys to Men, hmm. some little group called New Edition. Hmm. Played them when they were new. That's how deep this run gets. So you, you not knowing, but you hear it. You have no idea how large that impact, but it matched the legendary songs we're playing. So I'm still playing Eddie Kendrick's Temptations. I'm still doing some LTD, and I got these new kids with all this pop behind me. And we turned Baltimore around. We turned D.C. around. And 1994, 95, uh, I'm back. Smoking Tony and the Bandit leave 102 for mornings. Well, Tony did. Uh, TC Bandit stayed for a minute. That was my first co-host. I'm coming back to do the, put together the Jones & Company morning show. Hmm. And every idea I could think of from Doug and, and legendary announcers that I worked with her, like I mentioned, KHJ with Boss Jocks, Robert W. Morgan, and their wit interest me their their skits interest me and i was trying to do it in a black version something no one else had heard or did um and and after you borrow from someone you're gonna wake up one morning you better have yours hmm. because their stuff is done so we started coming up with ideas when we built the jones and company funky larry jones morning show that ran for 10 years on two different stations it was on purpose that I had Chili Bill with me, hmm. Jack Yates. It was on purpose that I had Des White with me, Acres Holmes and beyond. It was on purpose that my first producer was Carla Farrell, Willow Ridge. Hmm. It was on purpose that my news person and co-host Val Wilson, Madison High School. Hmm. I got all Houston right surrounding yeah, me. Yeah. And I'm the most curious announcer this city has ever had about the H. I want to go places. I want to see stuff. And I want to know. Tell me the history of Riverside Hospital. Tell me the history of Jack Davis uh, Jeff, Jeff Davis um, uh, Hospital. Tell me how Allentown came to be. What is Frenchtown? Oh, Fifth Ward. Show me Wheatley High School. Uh, I want to know. And they're like, Larry, nobody has ever asked us to do this. I said, well, I ain't everybody. Hmm. Uh, Spend many a night at Lockwood Skate Palace. Hmm. <laughs> just hmm. being, just being nosy, just being nosy, um, and and watching and listening and watching to make sure that we were in pace and had a sound that reflected the city, and and that's all I ever wanted, man. We played for the city. My heart was to the city. I people were like, oh God, I got to shout out Miss Joyce Beal who uh, worked at uh, uh, Tidwell Elemen Ele Elementary forever. She was an administrator. And her first phone call was, Foggy, 
Y'all don't never come up here on the north side. Y'all <laughs> always down there on the south side. Y'all just do stuff on the south side. We got kids up here on the north side that need stuff. We need a fundraiser. We need a toy drive. I said, all right, Miss Joyce, no problem. Go back to my then general manager, uh, Ernie, Mr. Jackson. I said, boss, we, we got to hit the north. And he said, okay, where are we going? I said, well, I only know about the lock whiskey. <laughs> <Yeah, so laughs> he, he said, well, we'll do that. And then we ended up doing a Stop the Violence tour at, at Wheatley. Uh, we found Hester House. We did stuff for the senior citizens at Hester House. And, and, and we kept rolling. Um, there was literally no door that was closed to Funky Larry Jones. It, and it was all about a toy drive or clothing drive. Uh, 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 vaccines for the kids. Uh, diapers, wipes, juice, toys. I mean, I get emotional about it because I put my heart into it, man. This, this was literally from our head with no corporate, corporate help. Now people go post up because Walmart can get a plug in. We wasn't none of that back then. Our, our number one spot for St. John, early days of, 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 of the, uh, the house. Um, God, I wish Rudy was here to help me with this. The hunger, the, they were feeding the homeless. Mm -hmm. And we would post up at the Kroger at South Pole Stoke and it's right, right there. Yeah. 16. Yeah. yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right on that corner. Mm -hmm. For a long time, Mr. Bill Underwood was, was the manager. God rest his soul. And we pulled up one morning and uh, kind of unannounced. And he said, can we help you? I said, we just need your parking lot. He mm -hmm. said, what y'all doing? I said, well, we're going to raise money for uh, St. John's uh, Church, the, the homeless fund. I, I, God forgive me for messing up the title. But that's what we did. And it was our number one location. Carla taught us easy access on, easy access off. Folks who didn't have anything who wanted to give could go in the store. If it was school supplies, they could buy a couple of reams of papers and some pencils and drop them off just to be a part of this thing because we made people feel good about it. So when we throw out the challenges to the churches, we throw out the challenge to the class of, of, of 94 from Madison High School, or we, we challenge any uh, Greek organization, any Masonic organization. I want to see the Eastern Stars. Because what you didn't know is that my grandmother was an Eastern Star. Hmm. I used to set up the table when they would have their little bridge games and and put out the mints and and and, and the nuts. So I know these things, right? So I, I, yeah, hmm. that was his job. So it 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 became personal. Uh, we would ask if we had tickets to give away to the largest donor. Um, back in the day. HISD used to have laminated diplomas. And I would ask for a diploma from whatever school was in the area. Hmm. So we got close to Hiram Clark. You know, I'm, I'm asking. Man, folk breaking their neck, come on, I'm trying to be a part of it. The shout outs worked. We did a couple of crazy things that I, I'm most proud of for uh, April Fool's Day. And man, y'all pulling this all out of me. Donnie, I, I'm I'm only doing this with you, man, because man, this you, is man. stuff I don't even I, I don't think about till you ask. Mm -hmm. But your heart's sincere and you honestly wanted to know. But these are through the ten years of the morning show. This is this is this is ninety four to two thousand four. Uh and 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 we're rolling. It became a regular thing. Uh, groups, can y'all come to this and do this and can y'all help us with that and, and you know it it was it it's with the god's heart you know yeah, you just yeah. it's it it's 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 the it's the gift he gave and, and you're just being obedient you know and, and what i learned the first year i was here man uh, my daughter and i went down to the uh george r brown uh for that thanksgiving feast and if you to get ever, the give back oh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You, you got to participate in that. If, you, if you're a Houstonian at some point, I think everybody should experience that. And if you have a vehicle with gas to get down to help, you don't know how thankful and how blessed you are. Because, I mean, I never did get into the thought of one day, but I got into the, 
the act of giving back. And you can donate once a week with cash. You can go work at the food bank. You can go downtown and donate your time. You've got so many kids. Uh, you, 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 you've got big brothers and big sisters that still need brothers. Now you've got the, uh, the 100 black men of Houston. You can donate your time, skill set, anything with these, these babies. And you, you get, <laughs> Donnie, you get caught up. Yeah, man. for real. You get caught up and you get in it. And it's, it's, it's the blessing. And for all the goofy stuff I've done, that good, that is what I miss the most right now. Uh, being a part of, of, of just, just, you know, doing that. The, uh, the years at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, I, I'm responsible for a whole lot of black folk mm. joining Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. We, when, I, when I came on board, the, the Middleton family, the Price family, uh, uh, dad was one of the few black directors and he called my general manager, Ernie Jackson, and said, we got all the scholarship money sitting out here, and we don't have many black kids applying. There's a boy on your radio station that's got a big mouth in the morning. Can he come out to the road? <laughs> I said, yes, sir. So... Um, I go out, you know, and I've always worn cowboy boots. People tease me about my boots and my head all my life, but it's always been a thing. Uh, I'm not trying to be any anything that I'm not. I'm just, I'm just, I love Western wear and it's me. So when I get there, I didn't realize that there was this, this bougie level of black folk with, 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 all, with all this money. And I'm like, y'all mighty quiet, hmm. you know, and, um, man, let's live in this party up. So I, I grabbed the mic and I did what I do. And for about five years, I became the host and MC of the gala for the, hmm. the it was then the Black Go Texan Committee. And it has morphed into one of the great organizations in the city, the Black Heritage Committee. And they're doing tremendous work, as you, you see now with, with Bun coming in and, 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 and 50 just the other night, setting records and and I tell people all the time, I said, don't get too caught up in this show. I love that you see that. I said, but remember, a large portion of this goes to scholarships. Hmm. And I made it a point on the shows that you need to get with your counselors or your, 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 whomever you speak to about furthering your college education and apply for this money. It's just sitting there. You know, some of it's up to, you know, five grand for the, for the ag kids, um, Two, three, four thousand dollars for other stuff, but every dime helps. So uh, one of my nieces applied. She, 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 she got a few bucks and 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 went on to TSU. Another niece applied and uh, went on to do theater at the University of Texas in Austin. Uh, so it works. So mm -hmm. education was a big pull. Um, and back then, it was so funny because it was still a half day. It was one Saturday. Black folk in the morning break. And the Hispanic crowd that afternoon, that night. And those were the only two black dates on the calendar. <laughs> My first show was Earth, Wind, and Fire. And it was, it was yeah. just amazing. Um, so that's how that. But all of this rolls under the umbrella of community service and give back. And that, Donnie, honestly, has been the essence of me in these 30 plus years in this city. Mm -hmm. Just to give back or the opportunity to um, celebrate. You know, celebrate someone's birthday or anniversary. Uh, you, you can only imagine how many people I've, I've prayed with and prayed for when their parents were transitioning or the loss of a child or um, a listener would tell us that the baby we saw on, on, on Channel 13 the other night, that was their niece and they're in tears. I had this, this Caucasian lady call Rudy one night and say, my daughter's missing. Can you, can you get on the radio and... Um, and back then we could, after we checked in with HPD and, uh, and Rudy said, it's too heavy for tonight's show. I'm going to leave a note for funk in the morning. And I go on, we make the proper calls and we're cleared to ask, had anyone seen this baby? And one old grandma called, Uncle Funky, we seen this little white girl over in Acres Home. 
I don't know who she is. We know she showed on Belong Over Here. But I can tell you where she is. Y'all hmm. want since about to be in here. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that. Um, and it was like that. And so we go and we, we, we save this kid. Uh, Channel 11 did a follow-up story with me about it. Uh, just just a lot of human involvement. If you if you Google Gary, uh, Gary, if you Google Jerry Springer and ask for Funky Larry Jones, I did an episode on Jerry Springer. You want Jerry? Yep. No shit. What you was doing on Jerry? Funky Larry Jones versus the Klan. Oh, you did one of those? Yeah. Yeah, I'll let y'all dig that one up. Okay, it's, how did you how did you even get tapped for that? Interview. Jerry had completed a book when I was working in D.C. and we did his interview. And I mentioned to his promoter, I said, "Well, I was born in Montgomery, Alabama. If you ever do another show on the Klan, I'd like to be in the audience." Fast forward, I'm now back in Houston, and I get a call, and it's from Springer. We're coming up to do. We're doing another Klan show. Uh, these women are breed and breeding. Well, that's what it's called. I'm a breeder for the clan, but they were having babies to be raised in hatred, just strictly hatred. And they said, we remember you wanted to be in the audience, yada, yada. So, uh, what do you want better? <laughs> I'm set. And then I get a call. Hmm. Uh, the activist who was going against the clan can't make it. Can, can, would you do the show? I mean, like on the set, and I get on set, and it's 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 fascinating. You want to you, you tripped out on that? Oh no, I handle my business. Hmm. I brought the funk. Yeah, you look it up. I'm gonna look. I it brought up. the funk. Brought Man. the funk. So, so it, the Jerry thing, it's not no, it's not contrived. This is all real back and forth. There were elements that were too silly to be real. Hmm. But bottom line, yeah, it's I I could have they were really from the clan and really felt this way and it was yeah. There wow. were clips from them in this little small town in Florida. And in current politics and every since the Pandora's box has been busted wide open, you see how deep this hatred thing is, and these people are in pockets, you know, they may do business with you, but after that, oh no, hmm. they just as soon as shoot you. You know, like the little boy in Atlanta, in his neighborhood. Uh, so it's real. And it's unfortunate. And this was just when the internet was starting to to get into play. And the Klan had put up all these, these basically uh, recruiting websites that these folk don't know nothing, anything about. Um, and I got a little taste of that. So mine was to pre-warn the audience and the television crowd that, this clan is not the clan that we were here late night rolling past my grandmother's house with the rebel flag, drinking beer, and and all this oh, mess no, in, no, the, no, in no. the yeah in in the late fifties, uh, early sixties. This is a little bit more sophisticated. Um, they dress well. They 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 have a different message, but it's still tinted hate and is, hate. Yeah, yeah, just about hate. And they recruit and they pull these poor kids who, you know, are strung out on drugs or uh, were picked on at school, or whomever was bullied and not necessarily hated black folk per se or Jewish acceptance. people or Hispanic. Yeah, but, yeah, but they, it was like a way to get that. And, and they fall in. And my appeal also was to the better mind of, of, of the young man and young women who, who know better. Hmm. Y'all just won state championship together. You and your black partners and your Hispanic partners, and now you want to shoot them? Come on, man. There's something else going on. And that's why part of my new platform will be on to mental health and, and, and try to help as many people as I can mm. with that because it's, it's, it's not real. The God I serve birthed love. That's all he did and or she did or they did. I mean... <laughs> However you want to. Yeah, it's a, yeah. a whole world of crazy <laughs> yeah. stuff made. But that, that's, um, 
that's that 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 was that was part of the the, the, the Springer run. It was it was good. I mean, I, I'm proud of that that I did. Talk about um the the addition of Ali once she comes oh, in Lord. the afternoons. My friend Ali Sadiq. Ali, and shout I, out Ali, man. That's mm, my boy, man. <laughs> it's over twenty years. Hmm. Um, I he was telling me. I think when he came on here, he was uh-huh. saying the first time he saw you at high was a big deal. He was like, "That's funk." Like, he was in. I don't know if "in awe" is the right phrase, but. He'll tell you about the black cowboy hat and he'll tell you about the boots. Yeah. First yeah. thing out of his mouth. Yeah. And he said, I said, I'm black J.R. Ewing. That's who I am. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to run some stuff, right? <laughs> so um he and GT both, it was, it was, it was different, it was impressive. Uh, but I'm consistent. Hmm. It it, you know, I've been laughed at, talked about. I said, why don't y'all stop? First of all, I can tell my own story. Number two, I'm laughing at me too. It's okay. Uh, I said, but we all like to eat, right? Oh, yeah, man. I love food. And where's that food come from? The grocery store. <laughs> and, and how does the food get to the grocery store? Where would it be before it gets there? I said, on a farm, just down the road in Wharton. Corn, cattle, fruits, all the stuff you like. And if you go a little bit northwest, you get to see some beautiful blue bonnets and enjoy ice cream from Bluebell. Where, who farms that land? And the absence of knowing about black farmers and black cowboys blew me away. Hmm. Uh, I said, they ain't got no cowboys in Alabama. Stop insulting yourself. Man. My uncle was a dairy farmer. My one of my uncles, I a lot. Uh, Uncle Uncle Emmett and 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 that side of the family were still sharecroppers up in in, in Talladega, uh, and they came out all right when capitalism showed up because their land became a part of the Talladega Raceway, so they got paid. But the bottom line is, I've been around or near ag all my life. And had no aspirations on becoming a farmer or raising cattle or, or, or vegetables, but I had an appreciation. And every summer I was somewhere uh, washing cow poop, mm. uh, <laughs> uh, pulling, pulling, pulling turnips or you know, getting your hands dirty. Man, <laughs> in there, which was one of the things that the, the elders told me when I first got here. Um, Become a part of the 100 Club in Houston. Stay out of Alvin and don't be scared to put your hands in the dirt. Hmm. At that time. Um, Pearland was a little sketchy back then. But we see with, you know, time. So the, 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 the thing with Ali and I, uh, mutual respect. He's a very intelligent comedian. I gravitate toward intelligent comedy. I get it. I still like goofy. I like silly. And he can do that as well. But his, his depth of things, he, I, he, he, he literally helped me with my high blood pressure. He turned me on to something called CMOS. Oh, I'd CMOS never heard of yeah. CMOS before in my life. And he said, you really want to get better, uh, start drinking or eating dragon fruit and get you some hibiscus tea. I threw my blood pressure medicine away. I don't need it anymore. Hmm. On his suggestion. Just common sense stuff that it it went in one ear, but it came out the other. It didn't stay for whatever reason. Um, but Lee put it in in a package that I heard, and it it, it it's funny because not everyone hears him. Uh, they hear they hear things. They they hear sound, but they don't hear. Uh, they miss the message. And for a long time, you know, I, he, he was a little defensive about this, that, and the third. And I know I should leave when you see this. I know you always told me, <laughs> Funky, you ain't got to talk for me. You ain't got to defend me. I know, but I love you, boy. So I'm saying this. When I heard him and he made sense, 
I would translate some of that energy into saying it a different way. Hmm. And the chemistry began to work. And the more I listened, the more we filtered some stuff through. Uh, but he had always wanted to be a part of any show I did. Um, when when I when I was co-hosting with Yolanda, he came up and, and auditioned for that. Uh, now his best friend in life actually got the job, Marcus yeah. Wiley, but and killed it with the uh, oh, Bishop Secular boy. and all. Yeah. And that was a that was a point for Mark. And because uh, I didn't, I introduced Mark first at the Arena Theater. He was a substitute. Someone didn't make it, and he opened up for James Brown. Hmm. And I liked him. It was something about Mr. Wiley that always, it was just good. And Wiley's energy and learning a GT and an Ali and the Muslim faith and, and this depth of a preacher's son, all this is, is surrounding me. And this, this is good energy. This is great stuff. So uh, I have a strong admiration for all those guys. But I remember Lee when he and GT were trying to open up a, a little comedy club, I think, on the Alameda. Hmm. And he just, fuck, you got to be there for grand open. You got to be there for open. So uh, Miss Charlene and I, my wife, we go down and we get to the spot and Ali is painting and GT is putting in a light bulb. Is that fun? Funk, we ain't open yet. I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. You're not quite ready. I forgot the name of the spot. But he's always had this business sense about him. Uh, he let me eavesdrop on a couple of conversations of some things he had been working on that has now came, come into fruition. Uh, the domino effect. He was actually... Classy. He was practicing on me in studio with some of that material. I had no idea yeah. until I saw it. Um, and I'm blessed to uh, do the intro on two and another intro for him on, on three. Uh, and I've done the voice work for this uh, theater tour he's on right now, the 100 City Tour. I've got a story to tell. Uh, so he's put me to work, and I'm, I'm grateful. Uh, but it, 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 was, it was organically and divinely designed. And I'm not sure if he shared this with you, Donnie, but here's the nugget. Mm. Ali Sadiq and Funky Larry Jones are born one year and one day apart. Not one year, 20 years and one, one, 20 years and one day apart. Oh, wow. I'm born in 53. He was born in 73. I'm October 16th. He's October 17th. That's crazy. 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 That's, that's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. By design, didn't know. And it was on after that. Hmm. I in in my entire career, I had never been called or visited the HR department while working with Ali. We went to HR three times. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, what are you doing? Oh, are you with him? I um he made me laugh when I needed to laugh. He came to me uh, right after COVID. And COVID, COVID by crushed me, man. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Had it not been for uh, JQ, Pimp, Pimp mm -hmm. walked me back in off the plank. I was gone. I, the claustrophobic atmosphere, we, we furloughed over half the staff. The ninth floor was like a ghost town. The sales team had orders still on the desk. The calendars were on the date that they ushered them out, and it never changed. So when you're in your studio and you want to go down the hall, you've been to the old 102 at, mm -hmm. at 24. You, the vending machines, coffee machines, all that's gone. Only thing left is a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. And... There's no coffee. There's no, there's no, there's no substance. There's nothing. I'm talking about outside. The world is in shambles. And the world's in shambles. But <sighs> you and your mind are supposed to create this safe place for folk who are listening. So it took everything out of me. Every day it drained me. Drained me. And when management 
came up with the idea, I, I, I welcomed it with open arms. Plus, you know, I know Lee like I know Dez. I know I know Lee like I know Marcus. You know, I, I've, I've, comedy has always been my go-to. And to have it in studio, goofy and live every day, uh, if nobody else got it, for three years, that was my therapy, and 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 literally just just put me back in a in a better place. But yeah, it was so dark. Um, I told Pimp that I was just gonna go home, but I was gonna go home through the ninth floor window. I was that depressed. I was really? that out of oh yeah. It was the act of what we do every day and what the guys and girls still do every day to entertain has never left. The old Quincy Jones leave your ego at the door. You're coming in as a performer, no matter what kind of world you got going on out there. When you hit, hi, I'm matters. on the radio, and my, yeah, and we do that. Um, and the reality is, is that's not real. That's not, that's yeah. not, yeah, yeah. And 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 again, but that was an era of radio that you you learn, you gleam in. Yeah. Uh, the show must go on. You 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 have to perform. Uh, and and this era became more of a less phony and deeply more real. You're having a bad day, and I know you're having a bad day. And I don't mind you having a bad day, actually. Funk, tell us about your bad day. Maybe we have something to help you. Um, maybe it's a, 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 a blunt, or maybe it's a glass of Hennessy, or or maybe it's uh, some Branson and and you know, pimp reps for 50 and he had a little brand and he'll tell you the story. And, and I'm not ashamed of it mm -hmm. because I was, I was in a bad place. Oh. This happened. This was a moment you had, you were at work Ooh. and you were like, man, Whoa. you know what? This is Cat. it. Um, they started making some changes at one Oh two. And I'll leave it there that philosophically, I didn't necessarily agree with. Uh, but again, that that change from, from old to new. And now you have to realize, young man who's over sixty, that you're they bus. They're aging, yeah. The yeah. bus, the but, but your bus. Yeah. And I know. And I, when I spoke to kids, I said, I understand. As good as you are, <clears throat> as great as you sound, that bus is coming with your number on it. You don't know when. It may take you to a cemetery. It may take you to rehab. It may take you to a holding cell to get refreshed, to catch the next bus that's waiting on you over here. You don't know, but be ready because there's a bus for all of us. So do your best, leave, leave as much legacy as you can and have fun. Hmm. And the have fun part left me. Have fun part left. So... Um, in the last chapter of the manuscript that we're, we're working on, uh, it's, it's entitled When the Funk Hits the Fan. Hmm. And if you're a fan of Mr. Hightower and the when Hightower. When the funk <laughs> hits the fan, all the people, people want a chance. Well, all right. Time to get funky. Yeah. So what do you do when the funk hits the fan? And, and, and the pandemic forced me in the fan. Hmm. And it, 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 oof, oof. Um, I thank God for <laughs> my wife for not leaving me because it was that bad. Uh, I, I thank God for uh, folk here in the city at Adalgo Recovery. Um, although what JQ did was not bad for someone like me that was in such a bad space, I began to rely on that every day. And had nothing to do with Q. All right. That was a funk you drink. He was just doing his thing to, as a friend. And it wasn't like we didn't go out and drink before. I mean, we, you know, we, we celebrated several things and yeah. But this was different. And it developed into some very bad habits. Uh, it, it, it developed into a kid who could drink all night, hmm. wake up. Hit it the next day, and that morning I woke up and it was like, "Did 
just didn't feel right. And that morning is when I was walking out to the vehicle and I asked God to help me with this drinking thing. This is, this has gotten out of control. I'm, I don't feel good anymore. And on my way home that night, um, I had an accident that almost totaled out my vehicle and I received my first DWI. Hmm. And it's funny when I tell this story in front of uh, folk who've gone through the legal system because here's a young man who hadn't had a speeding ticket in 25 years. Hmm. I have had no kind of warrant. I can't even spell warrant, right? Nothing. You can't find my name on anything connected to the legal system, system other than voting. So I'm in a new space, Donnie. Um, I, <laughs> I, the Hardy Toll Road is my, my home. And the last toll booth before my exit is at just before Beltway 8. And if you've ever been on the Hardy and you know once they went all automated, that old building became the, the, the constable's substation. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, how funny when you ask God for help, when you're driving. Now, I've driven all the way from 24 Greenway Plaza. I'm at Beltway 8, driving, ain't bothered nobody, sober. So he thought. God said, all right, it's time to bring you in. Ten seconds. I drift across the the Hardy Toll Road and smash into the barrier in front of the constable substation. I told you, your boy gonna do it, he gonna do it big, baby. This Uncle Funky, come on now, we gonna, we gonna, oh. we going out, we going out with a bang, baby. Yeah. Man, the boys laughed, they said, uh, Mr. Jones, you wanna do the breathalyzer? They, they automatically recognize Funky Larry, what, what's going on, man? And, and, I'm, I'm, Did you do the breathalyzer? Oh, yeah. You did? The numbers, I put new numbers on that thing. It, it ain't <laughs> never seen no numbers like that before. <laughs> what the hell? I said, hey, man, you know, I'm just trying to get home. But yeah, so um, this is why I tell folk, I said, when you have a serious talk with your creator, make sure you're prepared. Hmm. Because whatever you ask for, you're going to get. I thanked him for answering my the prayer, the money, the honey, the cities, the stations. <laughs> The wife, the kids, the kids, the grandkids, everything I could have asked for, everything I have asked for, I've received. And you got to know when you know enough is enough. Hmm. And that morning when I left every scenario, I clicked every button on something miraculous happening that night. And it did. Uh, It was on a Friday. Um. Because Uncle Funky has a good rep, there were some things that didn't happen to me. And um, there were some things that I wasn't subject to. But You're talking about as a result of everything? Yeah. yeah. Never didn't lose my job. As a matter of fact, we learned more about the Radio One family that there is a piece in their platform that deals with substance abuse. Hmm. And they welcome me with open arms and this is covered and that's covered. If, when you go to recovery, when you go here and, and that and this, um, you know, the only thing that's not covered is your lawyer and running it to some rowdy. And I know you're watching <laughs> bailiff, uh, <laughs> the Williams. Yeah. Just they knew who I was on the second visit when I, on my court dates when we were getting everything assigned and, and yeah if I heard you give us a shout out when you said you, I said yeah. well next time call my name it, it's getting funny now so I'm in the system and I don't know anything about the system I'm learning the system is slow ain't nobody going nowhere fast we don't care who you are, what your name is, what you do, son. Hear the rules. Follow the rules. You can move next step, baby. 
I don't know if this sister, when this airs, is going to uh, be on the bench. I hope so, because, you know, we're, we're in voting season now. But Judge Ashley, Judge Ashley almost threw the book at your boy. Because he tried to play the Uncle Funky card. She wouldn't have none of it. Hmm. And uh, there's a there's a rule you can't break. If you do break, that's automatic uh, 60 days behind bars. And I'm not built for that. <laughs> my, my family's not built for that. <laughs> so, a violation. Mr. Jones, it's only because this is your first offense but anything else, you'd be spending 60 days in jail today. But I'm assigning you 10 AA classes that have to be finished before December 31st. It's November 26th, Ooh, right after Thanksgiving. Come on, man. I don't even know. Yeah. And if you don't complete them, then there's going to be some more stuff and some more stuff. And the light went off. Said, these folks serious. And then the back light went off. Unc, you did ask God for help, didn't you? Hmm. I said, man. You know it's going to come yeah, like this. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> but here it is. Yeah. So you can't punk out now, Funky Larry Jones, Mr. Texas Radio Hall of Famer, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, what you got? Where's that gut now? I'm like, yeah. It's crazy to hear you talk like this because I talk to myself that same, the exact same dialogue. Like when things are, yeah, it's crazy. It's 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 self help because you know, you know the inner you, yeah. you know that cat, you know the real guy or girl inside of you is listening, and uh, like I preface whatever your take on God is, you, you got to know there's there's got to be something else other than us. So you all right there? You, we're on the same squad. And the the, the fun part now, uh, because that was all of, what, two, two years ago now? Um, I've been sober for two years, haven't had a drink. Hmm. Um, and going out, my drink of choice was double shot of uh, Hennessy. Hey, yeah, neat. Me, yeah, me too, neat. yeah. Neat. Yeah, yeah, neat, yeah. 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 No, no ice, ice. Yeah, no ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was that was the appetizer. Yeah. And I began to know I was having a problem, Donnie. Again, I began to do things out of character. I'm hosting a 25th uh, wedding anniversary for a couple, and I'm nervous. I don't ever get nervous. I've introduced Yolanda Adams in front of 20,000 people in New York <coughs> City. What's to be nervous? Boy, I'm I'm flipping. And I asked Miss Charlene to I said, babe, something's not right. I'm 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 drinking before we do this, just to get started. Now, through a party or session, you know, I'll toast one up to the to the crowd and all that and and we go home and, and we, we do what we do, but before so I'm beginning to know something inside is not right. Uh, there's some, there's something missing. There's a, there's, there's, there's a thing. Um, there's a communication thing. There's, the, and, and, and I'm not going to blame it all on COVID. Cause That's what I was going to say. Did, yeah. did you get down to it to see if it was directly COVID or if it was something well, else? COVID opened a door to a bunch of secrets I had been hiding. Bunch of stuff I hadn't really spoken with to anyone. I just kind of did that old mental thing, hang your ego at the door and go to work, and it'll work itself out. Um, but I'm on a crossroad now, and it ain't working itself out. <laughs> and I don't know what to do. I don't have a clue. Um, and, 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 and thank God for the facilitators who deal with this on a daily basis. As I mentioned, a doggo recovery, it was, it was shocking. It was shocking for me, and we had we had folk in, in 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 the groups that had violated, you know, they three four times DWI. And I'm like, why would y'all come back here again? This is these are three hour classes, three nights a week. Mm. You know, thank God for Zoom, but this is painful, and you 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 have to get a certificate from uh, the Mad Mothers Drunk Driving. 
you've got to pass this thing for Harris County. They've got to you know they, they 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 take this test and and it's just bombarding. And then there is the money to put the car back together, and you're still paying the lawyer fees, and you still got rent and stuff and stuff. And how did I get here? Hmm. I asked God for help. Hmm. I'm like, okay, Lord. So weaning myself off of alcohol, because the first thing I had to admit was I had a problem. And that was a fun first meeting. Hmm. So everybody in class who thinks they have a problem with alcohol, raise a hand. <laughs> we social drink. We, we, ain't, we, we, ain't, we ain't got no problem with no alcohol. Well, if you didn't have a problem with alcohol, how'd you get the DWI? You must have done something. I went to sleep behind the wheel <laughs> after having how many drinks? <laughs> so you're drinking on the job. You go to dinner and you drink before dinner. You have your appetizer and you drink and then you have your, your, your entree and you're drinking and then you have a drink after that. That's 10 or 12 drinks. You didn't even realize. Boy, walk across that floor straight as a, just one little thing. But I asked God for help that morning, and he showed up that night. Mm. And he said, come here, little boy. We're going to sit down and figure this out. So when I began to get it and take it seriously and realize that the, the classes were essential after my second week i'm like man everybody ought to go to therapy everyone needs to go to therapy because the stories that came out uh and and good people I, I hope to to one day see a few of them on the street um because it was it was really opening up my eyes that a you're not alone and a lot of things that you kept cooped up inside you you now can talk about Third week, and I got to shout out Miss Alexis. Um, by now, I'm almost in a leadership position because I am so honest with every question they ask and the family problems, the money problems, uh, work. Was there a problem? And like I stated earlier, to learn that uh, the Radio One team had a platform for substance abuse in in in, in its in its and it's, uh, 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 I don't want to say mantra, but in its, in its uh, uh, handbook to, 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 to for employees who are um, in, in trouble. And, and, and admitting that I was in trouble was, was really the first thing. Did anybody, what, before everything kind of came to a head, did anybody notice with the drinking? Or did you have that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mentioned Mr. Metcalf earlier. Charles would, he said, something's not right hmm. on a bad day. Uh, but on a normal day, when I'm just flying high and Lee and I are doing what we do, some of the best radio came out because hmm. we, were, we were in another space and could get home and come back. So it was really a part of the routine. It be, had become that thing I developed when I was smoking. And when I tell people I used to smoke, they're like, what? Smoke cigarettes? Yes. Hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was I was that joke every comedian talks about. <laughs> I was a Benson and Hedges 100. I was a cool filter kings. <laughs> <laughs> I was that guy until God spoke again. And this time God looked like my my teenage daughter who was on her way upstairs to, to do her homework and and after dinner, you know, you fire up, you sit down, and I mean I still got the pose. I and she's going up, she back back down. She said, Dad, uh, Pops, didn't you promise me two years ago you were going to quit smoking? Hmm. Hmm. Donnie, I looked at that cigarette. I looked at my child. I looked back at that cigarette. I said, damn. I said, you know what, baby? I did. I promised you. And fathers know. You promise, you got to keep it. I put that cigarette out, man, and I cold turkeyed. I never picked up another one again. Been in clothes my whole life. Never bothered me. 
That's over 25 years. Damn. To test the theory on not drinking with that theory, well, I'm still hosting the Red Rooster every other Friday night. Hmm. We, we wake up drinking it and proud of it. So I made the announcement that uh, God in Harris County had deemed it that it was time for Uncle Funky to quit. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we're going to do one final toast and I'm done. I said, but it's going to leave more for everybody else in the club. And like I said, man, that was uh, that was 22. We're into 24 now, and 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 I haven't had a drink, haven't haven't missed it. Can't say that I haven't thought about in a pressure situation, but that was the old one of those old crutches where when I I, I had to make a business decision or thought, I always thought I was thinking clearer with a a, 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 a tumbler. Of, 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 of Hennessy and no knock on Hennessy or cognac. We'll do that. Um, I thought I looked good, you know, and, 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 and I began to make better decisions without it. Uh, so my go-to drink now is hibiscus juice, hibiscus mm. tea, um, dragon fruit, dragon fruit lemonade. And it, it's, it's, it, it's okay. It really is okay. The few chances I had to perform, go out to either host or uh, do a concert uh, or, or perform at, at, at Rooster, that was the big test because I had, I, I remember how I was when I'd had a drink. I knew. And it was a part of that. That routine was, man, and it was, and it's, it's, it's kind of a cool thing being that MC or that hype guy that can get folk out of their seats on the floor hmm. to have a good time. And that's all you want. Y'all paid to come in here. What the hell are you doing? Sit down. You know, and I know we're killing it because, you know, Bobby Mason, the, 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 the music's good. Or when I work with Jay Paul and, whole, and his Zydeco crew, they rocking and y'all just sitting. And I'm like, wait a minute. Cut that off. Hmm. <laughs> Walter. Let's wobble. <laughs> and, just, boom. Um, and it's a good feeling. And you, 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 you've earned the money they paid you to hype the crowd. I've been on both sides. I've come out to have a good time. And I've been a part of making it a good time. My thing was I knew the party really didn't start until I got there because hmm. I'm one of the loudest cats in the building. And I can go all night and the energy's all good. Because I'm goofy like that. I was built like that. I did that through college. Uh, remember, I've, I've marched in front of hundreds of thousands of people at, at state. So performing, huh? oh, yeah. Hmm. Come on. I used to grab the ladies. I'd put them on, on the floor. We'd go out by ourselves. Hmm. I said, y'all better come out here. And then at, at the old Oasis back in the, the, the mid-90s, it was always something enticing. I may have a couple hundred bucks in my pocket, you know, and... Put it on the dance floor. Let's 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 have a contest impromptu. Hmm. Or when we got to just joking, we do goofy stuff like adult musical chairs. Hmm. That's funny. Yes, GT told me about that. <laughs> GT, I believe, told me about the musical chairs. Yeah. yeah. That's one of mine. We 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 uh, <clears throat> I was always a fan of Let's Make a Deal. Hmm. So at the end of the show, Monty, uh, and now uh, so what's the child, the little black kid that does it? Um, they always ask, what's in your purse? Do you have a, a boiled egg in your purse? Boiled egg, a hotel room key, or something, and they got some cash for you. That was, okay, we can do that. We can mm -hmm. do it for the radio. And I know no one else has done it. So here we go. And it worked. You know, and, and, and the crowds loved it. We, we've gotten things like strands of weave for a pair of maze tickets. Mm -hmm. I had <laughs> one cat had a warrant. I said, well, good. you about to go to jail, but the concert is before you go to jail. So <laughs> <laughs> enjoy, <laughs> yourself. So enjoy yourself. Enjoy yourself when you go. Uh, uh, the travel kits, the hygiene travel kits, the toothpaste and all that. Someone always had that because my mama kept that stuff. And I always thought that was crazy. Um, and and the, the, the laminated ID from the ISDs. That worked, um, party stuff. We, we would always deep 
think through anything. And and someone would usually have something in their pocket or in the purse to, to win a prize. So, but it was all about entertaining and all for having a good time. So when you leave the spot, man, fucking Chili Bell, them boys crazy. But I was, I, I enjoyed myself. You can hear that leaving out the door and that resonates with you. Job done. Uh, man, we, we, we had Lockwood, Walt, one of his birthday parties. And they're like, man, we haven't done this in years. And they're having a good time. Smiles on folks' faces who came and bothered with something. Mm. And, and now they're happy. Job done. You know, uh, GT and I at the old uh, Palladium with Lonnie Mack. Uh, legendary uh, Captain Jack and I at, at one of the earlier days at, at the Rooster. I mean, I've been blessed and received by club jocks, and I can say this boldly: a lot of club jocks could care less for a radio cat. Mm. They were like, "Man, get out of my booth! It's my spot." Yada yada yada. You know, we were the first station ever to go live from a club with the old uh, Friday Night Live on 102. But I earned the respect of legends like Clarence Baptiste, and and I earned the respect uh, of, of, of a Walter or Chili Bill, and and it it's a good feeling. You know, I don't, I never possess the technical skills to do what they do, but musically, and to help hold someone on the dance floor, or maybe it's a, it, it's a happy hour. And, and if I can get your head nodding or your foot tapping on, then I know you're enjoying yourself. And that's my job. Hmm. That's my job. And we've, we've done it well. You know? So there are a lot of facets to the Funky Larry Jones package, not just the radio. There's a community service work. Yeah, he did the clubs, but it was the entertainment part of setting up whomever was about to knock your socks off. Hmm. And that birthday celebration or that birthday shout out just before we brought New Edition on stage or that anniversary shout out at the Arena Theater just before we brought on uh, Teddy Pendergrass. Or that night, I introduced Marcus to primarily a, a, a 90% white audience to see James Brown. Uh, I, those, I, you're never going to ever forget those. And it's, it's peace to my soul that that work that I was given, that 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 bundle of things, I did to the very best of my ability, twenty four seven. I torn up two marriages, um, and Miss Charlene has threatened to leave me a couple of times because <laughs> she just she said I didn't sign up for all this nonsense. But you know she's a fifth board girl, so she she's tough. She's a weekly kid and. And you know they 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 come special out of out of out of out of, out of Fifth Ward. So mm-hmm. um, you know I, I love it dearly. It's um, but that that door, that window, for that era for now, has closed. So when people ask about retirement, um, did you? I, that's what I was gonna ask you about yeah. that. Do you? Did you intentionally set yourself up to leave 102 or was it just kind of like just how radio goes? I mean, they make these decisions and it just goes where it goes. Yeah. It's, um, again, you have to look at it with a different eye. And was it planned at that particular moment? No. Uh, Did I expect it? No. But it's the best way without me getting too technical and too deep into things that really isn't folks' business. Um, my, my VP and general manager, who's a shape straight shooter, uh, she said, "Hey, this is this is the deal, and what you'll what you will be receiving is this, and you have the opportunity to say goodbye." Uh, and a lot of folk don't get that, and it was impromptu, but um, by the Instagram hits we received and and the stuff I'm still getting now. Uh, it, 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 it was a chance for me to release. There were some very special moments um, in terms of, of, of how I got my name. And, and, and you know, if you ever listen to the old morning show, we, we opened up with the Dells, opened my heart, and we closed with James Cleveland. It's been a good day, and I had a chance to, 
to end with that. Hmm. And um, uh, for performer, you, whatever your favorite line is and whatever play you performed or whatever you did, uh, or you took the last shot to win that game, and it, no one can ever take that from you. Like Bill Parcells told an 80s Giants team, they'll never be able to take away from you that you are Super Bowl champions. You did this. You earned this. You won this. And I earned it. Hmm. I earned it. There's, I didn't shortcut anyone. Uh, there are days and nights that, you know, we, we would be here to tomorrow still talking about some of the stuff I pulled to get ready to go on a show. But it, 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 I didn't have anything else better to do. I didn't have anything else better to do. Hmm. I didn't have anything else better to do than that. And I did that. So, yeah. Uh, oh, Funky, you think you all that and bag, a bag of chips? And I said, well, honestly, I am. Hmm. Why are you here? Hmm. And why don't you let me buy you a drink? What? Hmm. You trying to hit on me? I'm like, I wouldn't touch you with a gym for bowl. <laughs> I said, but I appreciate you coming out. And I want you to have a good time. So it's kind of hard to deny a guy with this smile, that calmness. And I just bought you a very expensive drink. Now, I've had people say no, but I never had people call me out like that and turn me down at the same time. So you learn what, kids? Customer service. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that you say you hate the most, you're going to need the most, especially when it's in dollars and cents. And that's all we do. It's dollars and cents. The people who support your podcast. I hope this episode is one of the highest rated and you make a ton of money. I have, however that works. Because uh, I'm learning. I, I don't know. But it's, I try my very best to bring my very best wherever I go and whatever I do. I tried not to do that once. And I have to reference that little short girl again. But I was leaving to go out to Walmart and I didn't shave. And she said, if you don't get your ass back in the bathroom. And shave. I said, we're just going to Walmart. Hmm. She said, boy, people know you. I'm like, no, I'm on the radio. She said, they know you. And sure enough, I played it off. I said, hey, I'm not going to shave you. We, we go to Walmart and someone is complimenting Miss Charlene's hairstyle and I say something and they were like, Funky Larry Jones. Hmm. I always wanted to meet you. I ain't never seen you before. I said, I ain't never seen you before either. <laughs> and I'm thinking, God man, I didn't show you. I look First like time getting seen and you yeah. And 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 but again on the mindset of the presentation, I have all I have is me. I'm not real skilled or gifted in a whole lot of things. So this has to work for me. So the teeth have to be right. The eyes have to be right. The skin needs to be good. Um, we kill the grays most days, and that's got to be there. Because when I shave it all off, it doesn't, it's not a good look. Don't like that. <laughs> the ring has to be right. The jewelry that I do wear has to be right. It's insignificant. The boots are, well, these are a suede, but uh, the jeans are pressed, not too heavily starched. The... Uh, Hall of Fame vest, because I respect Donna Houston. That, the one thing Ali said was, man, you got to do his show. Because Donnie sure, is the man. He said to be on Donnie Houston's show is, is, is hitting the pinnacle. He said, you want to be with Donnie. That's what's up, man. And, and, and I see, because you've learned the skill. You don't talk much. Yeah. You let your guests talk. That's what's about. Yeah. And a lot of folk don't understand. You want to calm the moment. You want to get the moment right. Just lead your guest in and he'll take it over. And the fact that you have learned visual skills and answering me with a head nod, I'll say something and you picked up on another question that kind of led you into another thing. You're good at your craft. And I want to honor that. Man, thank you, man. This is damn, bro. I pay attention, guys. I pay attention and I pay attention to the youth because as I said, that bus is coming. And I told all the guys, there's, there's going to be another body in this chair. You might as well be top shelf 
first class and go for it. Anybody can just be regular. I wasn't born regular. I was born goofy and a decent voice. Everything else had to be learned. And I spent a lot of time learning. I paid some serious dues learning. I'm still learning. But once you get it, and it's all for greater good, oh, the blessings are cool and crazy. I'm like, I would have never imagined. Hmm. Me? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like, Jesus, thank you. Lord, I sure appreciate you. <laughs> <laughs> and the family, the community of faith, a little something. And, and I work at the church. I do voice work. What's that, Jesus? Community of faith, 1024 Piedmont. The amazing Bishop James W.E. Dixon II. What side of town is it on? Outskirts of the Fofo. Oh, no. Pinemont okay. and Shepherd. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pinemont yeah. and Shepherd. And uh, <clears throat> not deeply in Acres Homes, the Acres Shaker, <laughs> the original money maker. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sonerica, that was for you. <laughs> and the family from PV. Um, but, and speaking of Acres Homes, man, they, they took me in. Oh, Jesus, Don, that was, for years I was running around asking for a club named the Ponderosa. One of those early nights, it was back in the 80s. And when I came to, excuse me, when I woke up, I was um, in a house, with a family in Acres Home. Hmm. Don't remember what street, but the folk let me spend the night and they got me cleaned up and, you know, head throbbed because I had just one of them dumb nights. And are you going to be all right, son? Because, you know, you, you represent the radio station, but you, you were drinking like there was no tomorrow. Hmm. I said, was I disrespectful? She said, by no means. Hmm. I said, did I, did I say or do anything that would have shamed you? Not at all. You were polite in your drunkenness, but your ass was drunk. <laughs> Toe up, inebriated. You, <laughs> you were gone. And instead of letting you get behind the wheel, we just brought you on. I never saw the family again. And for years, I was telling people about the the, the 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 Ponderosa Club, Ponderosa Club. So one 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 MLK parade, and I'm out just clowning with the wireless mic for the parade started. I'm like, y'all tell me where this club is that used to be here in in, in Acres Home, the uh, uh, Ponderosa, Ponderosa. And one old sister said, Funky. I don't know nothing about no 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 Ponderosa. Now there was the there was the uh, uh, what the hell is it? It's a horse. It was a horse from but I was using Ponderosa for Bonanza, and the name of the club was actually the name of a horse. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back to me, but. I said, Lord, have mercy. I'm, no, I want no Ponderosa. So it, the kindness of the city in, in the smallest intricate forms has, 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 has blessed me. Hmm. Filipi Filipino? Not Filipino. That's a, nah, it'll come back. Like I said, 70 can play with your boy. <laughs> 70. Don't I look good for seven days? Hey, man, it's a blessing, man. Man, it took a trip out every time I look at it. I'm like, y'all crazy. 70. <laughs> this, this ain't 70. <laughs> man, it's good. It's good. So, but when folk ask me about, you know, where I'm from, and I said I was born in, in Montgomery, Alabama, but I was raised in Houston. Hmm. I became a man in Houston. I married and divorced twice in Houston. Um, my child, who now 
works for United uh, was raised here. Uh, I married into a, a beautiful young lady and, and her family out of out of Fifth Ward, Texas. You can't you can't be any more. More in the field. Yeah. I, I, yeah. You can be. Yeah. And 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 that's what I wanted. So when I realized that I was really crafting my own story. Setting up your own life, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said this, and I called her out, which is another piece of the manuscript we're chopping up. Um, it was my specific prayer, because after the second divorce and, and some really bad little relationships here and there, uh, I woke up one night in a, in a world of mess, and I was, I was asking God, I said, how did I get here? I didn't ask for this. He said, yes, you did. Hmm. Now, I had been going to church a lot, but I had been in that era, and I was a member of Abundant Life Cathedral at the time under Dr. Ed Montgomery. The first time I could ever say a church was my church home. I went regularly. Uh, I would read for the church. I enjoyed ALC. But I had, yeah, God spoke to me, and God said, and hey, and if I did hear him, I didn't know it was him. I didn't. But this was different, Donnie. This was real different to where I got goosebumps. And I said, okay, I perceive the voice I hear as the voice of God. Hmm. I said, but still, how did I get here? I didn't ask for this. As I go to the refrigerator, get a glass of cranberry juice and come down. Because we about to talk. We having this open conversation. It's three something in the morning. And he said, what did you ask me for? I said, I asked you for a woman that was yay tall, looked a certain way, and could rock my world. I gave you exactly what you asked for. Hmm. I said, yeah, but what about the, the embezzlement and the cocaine and the sleeping with NBA ball players and, and, and that? See, That's a part of that package. <laughs> you didn't ask. You didn't say nothing about that. Yeah. All right, light bulb. I'm like, are you telling me that if I had asked for a woman who loves God, is a good mom, has her own money, doesn't do drugs, looks a certain way, by yay tall, and can rock my world, I can have her? He said, yes, you can. As I sit here, God is my witness. Three days later, at Razu's restaurant on 59, Fat Tuesday, 2000, I saw her. Hmm. Or as we would say up in the fofo, I seen her, Mr. Larry, I seen her. <laughs> you seen her, man? Yeah, I saw her. And I told my partner, I said, man, that's the next Mrs. Jones. He said, boy, your story has been in the Houston Chronicle. People still laughing at you. What are you talking about? I said, dude, I'm telling you. You said your story's in the Houston Chronicle? Well, divorce is a public record. Gotcha. gotcha. So if you want to know, you can go right down and dig it up. and you know, No big deal. That's when the crowd was trying to tell my story. And I said, listen, I was there. <laughs> I've known this brother for a few years. I can tell my story way better than you can. It wasn't two drinks. It was five. All mm -hmm. right. So, yeah, I said, um, that's going to be the next Mrs. Jones. And there was a year of silliness and goofiness. And one question came and I had to realize that I did ask for this. Mm -hmm. Again, it's that, that knowing of, all right, what are we doing? Oh, Lord. I did. Okay, it's time for you to step from over here and be this guy that you say you're going to be, committed and responsible. So that was, uh, what, 24 years ago? Hmm. Wow. 24 years ago. Um, and for her side of the story, which is hilarious, uh, she wasn't even coming to the event. It, like I said, it was a Fat Tuesday. Step Rito played. It, it was a remote for 102. Um, I, I, I really wasn't expecting, but like I said earlier, when you ask for a thing, it is coming and the package showed up and she was everything. And, and 
we were like the two ends of the, of a magnet, you know, at first. And then one night it, it, it connected and we spent six and a half hours conversating. And I was sitting in the wheel well of, and this baby drove a white Toyo, uh, uh, Tahoe. And she's about five foot something. <laughs> so I um, and can drive. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We were picking up some money one night. And she came around the ramp off 59, go to 45 on two wheels. I said, yeah, I know I love you for a reason. This is my, this is my, she, you wrote it. I'm like, yeah, let's, let's go. So there's, um, you, you, you put the picture together of the four kids and us, and it looks like it was always there. Hmm. It looks like it's always there, man. So, um, I, I I can't be any happier. Uh, we 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 challenge each other. She she manages the, the the business side, and you know, and you know, I'm the creative, and we go out and we create. Um, so in this new season, uh, there's uh, the stuff that you should already know to do, but I'm kind of learning that 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 I say I also have to do. So there's new headshots coming, the business cards. Uh, there's a couple of new DBAs we put out for some segments I'd like to do. Folk have said that the podcast world is big enough for Uncle Larry to sit down and have something. So we're chopping that up as well. Uh, I, I have a new publicist in, in Raven Carmouche, and, and um, she's got her own business. Uh, and for the Zydeco fans who know Raven, her dad, uh, the late great Scooby, who was a drummer for J. Paul Jr., Zydeco mm. New Breeds. And um, she is, she is that, she's that chick. So I've uh, got some bright young minds around me and everyone has a seat at the table. There are no bad ideas. There are no, goo I mean, the goofier, the better for me. Because I still don't know a 70 year old who has a TikTok and a YouTube channel, <laughs> and a Facebook, and Instagram. You're still in the mix. <laughs> I'm, man, I'm so proud of that, you know? And and some of, the, some of it I fought kicking and screaming. But you, uh, I hear you, Raven. We, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a running joke. One of my producers loves and hates me to this day because I was telling her, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. And the clock is counting. We're on the air. And she's trying to convince me and the whole thing was I wanted her to sell me on it. Hmm. I wasn't saying no to say no. I want it to mean as much, that much to you that you want me to handle this. That means it's got, some, it's got something to it. it. We're supposed to be there. Because you can imagine the kind of requests we got for stuff and, eh, y'all running game? Ooh, it's not nice to fool with Mother Nature. He'll get funky on you hmm. real quick. Not a good look. So hey, she hands it to me, and I've got five seconds to come out of break. Jones and Company Magic Morning Show, Magic 102.1, boom. And I'm selling it. And I'm reading it, and I'm selling it. And Natalie Jones is over in the corner of the studio filming. Hmm. This, shout out to the Klein Golden Eagles, <laughs> and, and 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 that was another one of those beautiful things that happened to my life and my career. Um, I, I gleam toward order, and and I can be out of order on purpose, or I can be out of order and I don't know it. And and creatives have that that blob, sometimes we look like slime, you know, we're just kind of all over the place. But if you can get us in that thing, mm -hmm. we are a beautiful sight and you need those who specialize in <laughs> rounding you off and okay, Funk, you, you got to wear this. You need to go here and do that. Say hi, don't forget to smile. And, and, and I'm appreciative. Uh, so it's, 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 it's good. It's hmm. good, Donnie. The um, the life is good. So far, so good. Um, I'm I'm over the moon, excited, and again for uh, for old 
Eddie Kane to be on your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty good, you know. And then, uh, you know, I, I, I'm wishing the absolute best uh, for Mr. Hatter. I'm a fan. And uh, this version of 102, I want them to do well. I wish them well. You know, it's um, it's it, it's a different lane, but it, it's, it's a different era. And I tell people all, all the time, you know, it's what I did or how I do a thing. Um, unless we have an oldie station where it would make sense, that banter doesn't fit what they're trying to do now at 102. And, and, that, and good for them. Uh, that's the audience that they are going to reach and, and, and good for them. But that, 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 that old school oldie station that you can almost smell when you hear it again, it's going to blow your mind because you've got all of these various flavors of our music. And if you know me, you know, I'm really big on Houston artists with a big sound like the H towns. Mm. I was in DC when H town came out and my chest was just, Oh, I'm like, I have a dog on. You know, we we it it was that next step up. You knew what rap a lot was all about because they were churning out hit after hit after hit after hit. But you, you know, I, I'm the kid that let the middle son play uh, uh, Michael Watts chopped and screwed tape in the car, hmm. and me showing that's devil music. Take turn it off. I said all he did was slow down. Listen, it's a song you know. I don't want to hear that. Eh, misunderstood. But um, on the last phase of the morning show, when we when we left to go across to Cumulus, I, most of my talk beds uh, were Deuce Out the Roof. Hmm. Uh, uh, any, uh, what's the boy, ball of shot calling? Uh, Troy. And, yeah, Troy. And mm -hmm. you got to remember, for this is 2000, so mm -hmm. we we still kind of in the right on, current right zone. In yeah. mm -hmm. So we're 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 in that zone, but those were the beds because I just the groove was infectious. I even played Hatters down south. The instrumental track on that, hmm. and they were like, "How are you doing that?" I said, "Because I can." Hmm. I'm not in competition with them. This is a joint group. We hit. We all win. This is room enough for everybody, man. So, you know, I've always tried to compliment the city and respect the city with that. So, mm -hmm. man, that's what we do, man. Yeah. Well, man, listen, this is this has been an honor, man. This has been a real honor, man. I, and like I told Hatter, like I've told JQ, like I've told, I mean, all you guys who are Houston just radio mm -hmm. legends, man. Like I grew up a radio kid, man. So you guys are all a part of that sound. Yeah. 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 And it's a good sound. And that's yeah. the thing that I want to leave and let folk take away from this it's it's not just an average thing it's it's above the rim it's a creative that we are innovative mm -hmm. we've done things had us done some things we had some of the most amazing when we did uh, uh april fool's stuff you know a, a lot of that's corny now we don't do it anymore but it it, it was just good creative fun uh, but Hatter's old morning show, man, with Jim Bob and that crew, hmm. uh, I thought they were just the absolute best. Oh, that's best. a legend. That's a legend. Yeah. And I used to, Don, yeah. I used to tease him because, you know, Mr. Joyner came in and, and, and sent me back to another space. So I had to go back to afternoons. But I said, I said, Mr. Hatter, you better be glad I don't have my old morning <laughs> show because it's going to be me and you in the morning. <laughs> studios right next to each other. I said, Mama You're coming said, for him. Woo! I'm my LL Cool J. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm knock you right out. He said, I, I know Mr. So we you know, it's 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 always been that thing because again, you're working for the city. Mm. I want the best for Houston. I want the best sound for Houston. I want the best bits, the best skits, the funniest we can be. And that's why you see our friend Ali Sadiq soaring. Soaring. Ali is one of the he's I mean it's understood now, but I think when it's all said, you have to you have to at this point respect him as one of the greatest storytellers of all Ever. time. You got it. Ever. And I, I I've sat under him and it it still amazes me. 
And, and like I said, he he was practicing on me, and I didn't even know. I get to the uh, uh, improv, and 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 he's. I'm like, I know the story, right? So I, I had just mad love and mad respect for all of the men and women I've worked with, man. It's been a, it's been fascinating, mm. fascinating. And thank you, thank you for the time this afternoon, man. This mm. is, uh, I can say. I was with Donnie Houston. <laughs> Good thing. Man, nah, thank you, man. This is, this is it's honor, man. I call my mom. I was like, hey, mom, I'm uh, Uncle Funky Larry coming on today. Yeah, yeah. Man, that was me popping my shit because that's, that, you know what I mean? That's like I told that's you. That's that era. That's that era. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And for the son of that era to pay tribute and, and show love is just flat out respect. That's yeah. respect. Yeah. And that's what we should be all about. Yeah. And, yeah. But I knew. I, I I call I call Ali. I said, "Man, I got the call." Hmm. He said, "Well, I said I'm going on that." Yeah, <laughs> that's what's up, man. Shout out Ali, man. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, for sure. Well, hey, man, um, it's Danny Houston Podcast, <laughs> Uncle Funky Larry Jones, man. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the stories, for the gems. There's so, there's so many little nuggets in there. Yeah. So many little nuggets, man. Um, I'm looking forward to what you do next. You know what I mean? You want to get social media out and YouTube's or whatever it is you want to promote. You know. What is it? At Uncle Funky Larry Jones. That is. That's it. That's it. Funky I'm Larry Jones on IG. Funky Larry Jones on IG. Facebook. Facebook and all social media. media. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and when I learn it, because <laughs> I'm an old school pit bull. I'm. I'm. Not, I'm a, <laughs> Oh man, that's, I that's, love you, Donnie. Thank man, you, sir. Thank you, man. Listen, right. it's been on. Uh, listen, this is uh, I'm Donnie Houston. This is the legendary Texas Hall of Fame inductee. Yes, sir. Fifty years in radio, thirty years in Houston. Um, hey, man, thank you for everything, man. He's the nutcase. He's the basket <laughs> case. There's no question about it. Boy's crazy. That's what it is, man. I'm Donnie Houston. Uncle Uncle Funky Larry Jones. Donnie Houston Podcast. We out here. Donnie Houston. Houston. Subscribe to the Donnie Houston Podcast, man.